Welcome to another episode of The Grind Bin. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Mann. I'm Chris Hughes. And I'm Bobby Trippett. And today we're talking about 1980s New Year's Evil. Brought to you by Shadow. Hey, Bobby, I got the money. Yeah, I made the cheese. But you're a hooker. Get that goddamn thing out of your mouth. Bro. I didn't say it, hooker. Oh. Spooky got, 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 got no wheel rhythm. Get some ass. Is that is that jerk off calling in? We're here, uh, New Year's Evil. Uh, yes, Hughes, as you said, the phone is ringing. Let's go ahead, put like, him on first. Literally, like five seconds in the show. Well, he's gonna have some news that he's not gonna like. So, mm. put him, right. pa- patch him in. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mr. Crown. What are you doing? Do you have a cold or something? No, I'm not Mr. Crown. I'm evil. That's some of the color ID says. Uh, you 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 sound like Mr. Crown. Your voice is a little different. All right, but... boy, shut the fuck up. All right. Wait, hold on. No, I have to tell you something, Mr. Crown. We put it to a vote, and they don't want you anymore. They don't want you on the show. They... Wait, what? What? I'm sorry. On what? On the Patreon. We put it to a vote, and it was very... It was razor thin, but people say they want a little less of you. It was same... One person said they actually wanted more of you... It's just insane. Uh, That's probably him. But slightly lost, so uh, you're going to have to be slightly off the show now, Mr. Crown. Well, it's my show, so fuck you. Uh, Look look at it this way, Mr. C. We're we're leaving him wanting more. You understand how that works. Trip it? Yes, sir. I have a feeling that you somehow rigged this vote. Did you have anything to do with it? Is this some sort of subversion, like you're... Somehow trying to take over the show for me or something. I, Absolutely I'm not, not, sure. not, sir. No, sir. I, I'm would, always on your side. I, I stood up for you. I feel like the only one I can trust anymore is Hughes. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. I didn't <laughs> How did vote. We end up here. <laughs> All right. So basically, you can say your piece, and then uh, you gotta go, Crown. Peace. And then maybe we'll have you come back at the end of the episode. So why don't you give us a little bit of uh, what you think of this movie? Now you know what. Fuck you. He hung, he hung wow. up. Wow. So. Jesus Christ. Huh. Well, I wonder yeah. where that leaves the bin. I wonder well, if it's up for we, sale again. wonder if we'll ever hear from he him again. he bought it, right? So he's not... Doesn't, I, so there's the chance he might sell us off to someone? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Disney? I think we've made a terrible <laughs> Have mistake. Have we been acquired by Disney? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Director of this movie, Emmett Alston, he also shares a credit on this movie. He only has eight credits, and this was his first movie. Hell of a start. Well, it all went downhill from there, boys. As it uh, often does. His career started as a DP, so he was a director of photography, mm, not the other That is not one. what I thought it was. <laughs> hey, now. No, no, no. <laughs> Docky punch? Uh, I do think it was on those type of movies. <laughs> Double pen. <laughs> I do think it was on those type of movies, actually, Hughes. So uh, there were two movies in the 70s nobody's ever seen, but they, they sound like pornos. And he was the director of photography for him, and somehow... He was the donkey punch. Got his way... <laughs> donkey puncher. Got his way into directing this movie, which was released the Theatrically for Canon Canon Films, welcome back to the grind bin. We missed you. I believe it's uh, Last American Virgin. Um, you get it wrong. It's not Bronson's Family Vacation. It was Kinjite. That was a Canon uh, movie. Uh, that was the, the one you're thinking is the one that he didn't do. With yeah, him. it's like Tristar. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Enter the Ninja. So welcome back, and you'll be back again. Come pie. <laughs> uh, director Emmett Alston appears in this movie as a bearded camera operator, and somebody put in the IMDb trivia his quote. Hitchcock style cameo. That's the only time he'll ever be mentioned with Hitchcock in the same sentence. <laughs> uh, in the same year he directed this, the same year he directed another movie called Three Way Weekend. Oh. Which has the most terrifying poster. I don't think you could put this up today because people would have uh, severe issues oh, with the, that. Yeah. Uh, Whoa. sexual assault nature of yeah. this poster. Yeah, uh, it's a nerdy guy with a reflection of two women in his glasses, uh, and his tongue stuck it out in a salacious way. Out of school, out in the woods, out of sight. 
Three Way Weekend. Boy, that's crown AF. Now, what do you guys think Three Way Weekend's about? <laughs> I think it's just the van, too. Because this is bizarre what it's about. I mean, nobody will guess. Go ahead. Guess what do you think it is? Three camp counselors get a new group of students and find love with each other, but they're all in three different cabins, so the guy goes to one cabin and then he goes to the other. <laughs> okay. And they don't, the two girls don't know about each other. That sounds like an episode oh. of Frasier. Yeah, or a Three's Company. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, what do you, what do you think? Uh, it's Give it about, a whirl. It's about a, uh, uh, an aspiring chef uh, learning to cook lamb three ways. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, close, close. I'm gonna have to give it to Chris though, uh, because he's Who the only one. Guess. No, he said he wanted. Oh. He thought it was a Van style movie. Okay, no. What's your guess? So three way weekend. It's about a kid learning how to make a three point turnabout. Okay, well Ooh, I'm giving it bad. to Hughes. Uh, it's about two bisexual girls going camping in the woods, and they're followed around by a pervert wearing a gorilla mask and a man in a uniform with a whip who thinks everyone's a communist. That's what three way weekends. <laughs> So, uh, March, we're going to cover this in March. Oh, yeah, we'll be getting it on that. <laughs> so, uh, the other movies he made 1985, Nine Deaths of the Ninja. Great 1987, title. Tiger Shark, which is a movie that's come up on this podcast before because it stars Mike Stone, the guy who was originally supposed to star in Enter the Ninja, and he worked on Raw Force. Absolutely. Uh, and I do have a copy of that. It's extremely hard to find, but I wow. do have a copy of Tiger Shark. You can learn more about it on the Enter the Ninja episode we did. Uh, 1988, he did a movie called Demon Warp. Know nothing about it. Thought yep. maybe Bobby would. Uh, yeah, it's a killer Sasquatch movie okay, with well. George Kennedy in it. There are no demons and nothing warps. And he made it. Uh, it's 19... a fun movie, though. Now, here's where it gets weird, okay? 1990, he made a movie called Little Ninjas. A treasure map found by three young boys allows them reason to get their kicks in more ways than one. Oh, God. So this is not, this is like a ripoff of Three, it three Ninjas? It has the well, worst poster I've ever seen. But that's Man. 1990, so that's before Three Ninjas, right? Wow. Rocky loves Emily. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, uh... Guys, Chris is right. It was made before Three Ninjas. Three Ninjas was made in 92. So somebody ripped the director of this movie off Man. and made Three Ninjas. I he think made... we just took Three Ninjas down a peg or two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but here's, if you noticed, they retitled it Three Little Ninjas on the poster. Even though that's with not the Indiana original Jones name. Song. It was called Little Ninjas before. Yep. Ah. Uh, but yeah, he came out with the idea of Three Ninjas and somebody robbed him. So, And that yeah, was his last movie he made. So he's done. Mm. Uh, he probably has a nice settlement. Yeah, <laughs> I would hope. Yeah, well, uh, the screenwriter of this movie, uh, Leonard Neubauer, uh, he only has nine writing, writing credits and this was his last uh, however, he started his career all the way back in 1940. Damn. Because he was born in 1916. Wow. <laughs> Making him in his 60s when he wrote this movie. All right. Which oh, cool. doesn't seem like it's written by a six-year-old. No, year old, not at but, all. Huh? There you go. The only thing he wrote you might be familiar with is 1973's Black Snake, which was a Russ Meyer movie. Huh. Now we get into the cast. Uh, Roz Kelly, who plays Diane in this movie. Fascinating woman. Uh, 25 credits, acted mostly in the 70s and early 80s, mostly in TV. I'd say her first big role was 1970s The Owl and the Pussycat, which was a Barbara Streisand movie. Indeed. Uh, then her most famous role was 1974 as Fonzie's Girlfriend, Pinky Tuscadero, in a three-part <laughs> episode for Happy Days. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's the career high mark right there. And then, uh-oh... She appeared in a Grindman All-Star movie, American Pop, the Ralph Bakshi movie. Uh, she was in that. I don't know if it's just a voice or her actual oh, self. It should have to be a voice in it. Yeah. Well, you know how he does that half live action, half she may animated. Have danced by. I haven't yeah. seen American <laughs> Pop. I don't know. Then she was in uh, Full Moon High by prolific writer and director Larry Cohen. That's, um, I, I need to track that down. Who they have just made a documentary about. I have not seen King it yet. Cohen. Just screened at the... Uh, Egyptian theater over in Hollywood. Larry Cohen is probably the, what, you'd say like the most big crossover success between B-movies and and blockbuster movies there is? Definitely in the conversation. Yeah. He's written, what is it, like 81 screenplays or yeah. something? That is her name. Like 30 <laughs> movies. A lot when Jesus. you start diving into these films. Yeah. So he's like wow. written movies like Full Moon High and directed it, but uh-huh. then he also wrote like Phone Booth. <laughs> the Colin Farrell one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He wrote oh, like God. he has these movies where he writes like a, a regular Hollywood movie yeah. and then he makes and directs that's like a, a B movie. You know the so rules. Weird. It's one for them and one for me. <laughs> yeah, that's well yeah. that's his whole career. Absolutely. Yeah. So Roz, uh unfortunately things t- took a turn in the late nineties. As uh, they do for a lot of these actors. As November nineteen ninety eight, she was arrested uh for shooting up cars 
and a neighbor's apartment. <laughs> yeah, so evidently, from my understanding, is a neighbor's car alarm went off. So yep. she went outside and started firing a, fi- a weapon <laughs> at every car around her. Alexa, what's that noise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it woke her up. And so, yeah, she went out with the gun. And, and shot up every car in sight. And their apartment. Uh, and she was arrested. Hell of a neighbor. Uh, in 1999, uh, she pleaded no contest in the car alarm shooting incident. She was sentenced to three years in prison, uh, but got it reduced to 90 days after a diagnostic evaluation. Uh, but then, uh-oh, in 2000, uh, she broke that probation <laughs> uh, because she apparently, her ex-boyfriend told the police that she hit him on the back with a cane. God bless her. And they put she, her back in jail. Yeah, she had a cane. Yeah, yeah, she went at him like the Sandman in the ECW arena. <laughs> yep, uh, and so that's the last we've ever heard of her. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Uh, but Bobby... Yeah, I did a little bit of digging, and uh, it's not confirmed, but there have been some reports that she may have uh, unfortunately passed away late last year oh, in shit. an assisted living facility. So, Roz... So things didn't go so well for her, ultimately. Uh, Rosalinda. The old, yeah. The old uh, pinky Tuscadero. You know, we'll always remember Fonzie's girlfriend mm-hmm. from that three-part episode. Hey. I didn't even know Happy Days did more than... Oh, no, wait. They did more than three in, episodes? J- the Jump, Jump of the, the Shark. Shark was a two-parter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kip Niven, who plays evil in this movie, <laughs> uh, 88 credits and still acting. Hell yeah. A prolific character actor that Evil never dies, Mike. Yeah. He basically appears in the background of tons of movies. You would never notice him, but he's in he's a doing ton, it right. a ton of movies, yeah. um, including big movies like Magnum Force, Clint Eastwood. I'm amazed um, they didn't cast him in Star Wars after Mark Hamill smashed his face. <laughs> he, hey, that could have worked. It yeah, worked. the new Luke. Looks just like him. It's the new me, Leia. <laughs> uh, so if you look at younger pictures of, of Kip, he looks like Martin Shkreli. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Imagine like a Martin Scarelli. Is, is he Luke. trying to still trying to hawk that not really a uh, secret Wu Tang album that turned out to be not even? Oh, I heard one. the feds took it. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. They, they took it as part of the seizure. <laughs> that's and, great. Uh, probably scratching it all up. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. They put it through the mail, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know how the U.S. Postal Service is. Yeah, it got lost. You know, fuck it. <laughs> the other day, I opened my mailbox and there was dirt. It's just fucking mud and shit all over my mail. Well, clearly you made the naughty list. <laughs> I guess, yeah. He left a little dirt in your mailbox. Yeah, did you look for the handprints and the kiss? Yeah, I did see it. The old Al Jolson, yeah, on the outside <laughs> yep. of the building. Okay, so this was his most, this is Kip's most prominent role on screen, pretty much. Well done, Kip. Grant Kramer, uh, take it away. He plays Derek Sullivan. Bobby, take it away. He plays Derek Sullivan in this movie, but Grant, Grant Kramer possibly most famous for playing a... Uh, the uh, the all shucks nice guy lead uh, Mike Tobacco in Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were going to mention his uh, starring role four years earlier in Hard Bodies. Oh, you know I meant to bring that up. Cool. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Killer Clowns, Mike Tobacco, absolutely, and he's great in that movie. Uh, it's a very different character from Derek in this movie, showing some serious range. Yeah, and have you heard what's happening? What's happening? So he is currently producing the Killer Clown sequel. It's well, called. The Return of Killer Clowns from Outer Space in 3D. Which yeah, ha- we'll see, man. Well, I mean, they've uh, they've been talking about that for a very long time. I'm a big Killer Clowns fan, so I've been been following that story pretty closely. And there's well, the Chiodos are attached at well, this point. Well, right, they've been attached since the start. Yeah, but but, uh, uh, but apparently he's going to reprise his role as Mike Tobacco. So I guess they're yeah. bringing them all back, <laughs> well, except for John Vernon. You I can't guess, get but, Vernon, which yeah. is unfortunate. Uh, here's another movie he was in. Have you heard of this one? 1992, Auntie Lee's Meat Pies. Is this an adult film? No, it's about a devil worshiping woman who lures back men to her place so she can kill them, ground them up, and sell them as meat pies. Like Man, a Sweeney Todd? Like a... Yeah, it was a very weird Fleet Street. I- I'm yeah, guessing it's well. Sweeney Todd meets Microwave Massacre. That's a good way to describe awesome. it, yeah. <laughs> There's a movie called Microwave Massacre? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, my God. It's directed by the director of uh, Malibu High's son. <laughs> It uh, is, uh, <laughs> wow. Really? Starring the bassist from... Well, well Hughes is so... From the Pennywise <laughs> cover band? But uh, it's shot on video it's cover band in the 90s, and it is uh, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. You can get the Blu-ray. Yeah, you can get it's the like Blu-ray for, for about $32. <laughs> yeah, it's like two discs. Why? And that. I played with this band in, in a... Where is it? Prague. And I, th- that, I was like, oh, it's a good Pennywise cover band. It turned out to be Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. It was us, no effects, and Pennywise. Like, Did they just start and end with bro him? You know, that I was think so, it. yeah. Yeah, I was all hemmed out by the end of the night. <laughs> 
I like Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't met him. Still? So. You play Pennywise still? Yeah. Okay, when I went to a Ducks game. I never claimed I had good taste at anything. When I, when I went to a Ducks game, they played Bro Him, and I was like, well, I haven't heard this since high school. Oh, that's weird. Do you remember when you guys played the El Ray, and it was still with the, the heroin addict guitarist you guys had? Oh, God, yeah. And the the killer, the the closing band was the the brother of the of the bassist from Pennywise. And that's how it was marketed. Jesus. Oh no. <laughs> and then they came in they had the the rings for the girls to dis, to dance. Yeah, it was like a circus act or something. Yeah, it was <laughs> That sounds wonderful. So I went to a, this Ducks game. It was like a 2014 and they were also playing like let the bodies hit the floor all this stuff. <laughs> I was like, okay, are we just like you know, early 2000s up I'll in this place? I'll take that at a sporting event over a tribute song to a guy who died. Like, that doesn't in... make sense at a sporting well, event. That's what they play for their power play. <laughs> Get it? Man down. <laughs> oh, God. Lucky you weren't an early 2000s Ducks fan because it was only Disney songs. Yeah. Well, see, now they're getting around to the new ones, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, That's all we miss, guys. Okay, so the other movie I wrote down that he was in was 1994's Hail Caesar. Now, do any of you know about this movie? Yeah, yeah. this is the George Clooney one, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> I know. This is the one before that. <laughs> yeah, with Anthony Michael Hall, who wrote and directed it and stars in it. And it is one of the worst piles of shit you could ever see. Uh, we Hate Movies has an episode on it, actually. Do they really? How yeah, it's a really, really old one. Uh, it stars Robert Downey Jr., Anthony Michael Hall, and Samuel L. Jackson. Go watch it. It's fucking terrible. All right. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to mention is that uh, Louisa Moritz, the lady in the disco bar who goes into the car, grind an all-star. All right. I thought I recognized the her. The girl that was sitting in the middle of the car did, would not stop talking? Yep. Okay. Grind an all-star, last American virgin. She was the oh. uh, Latin lady they were trying to have sex with. She was trying to lure those young boys in and have sex with them. Yeah, bless her. And then her army husband came home. <laughs> Um, Roger Ebert reviewed this movie. Oh. uh, And he gave it one and a half stars. He hated it. Well, then. But he did give it credit as being not as bad as the trend at the time. Because everybody was so upset when this movie came out. If you look at the reviews written back then, they were like, fuck this movie. Fuck Friday the 13th. We have devolved, everybody. We're in the worst era of movies ever. These movies they're coming out with, they're sick. They're depraved. Because this was right at the crest of the slasher boom. Yeah. And this was a couple years out from Halloween. (laughs) We're between Halloween and Friday. Yeah. No, Friday came out this year. In 1980, it came out the same year as Christmas Evil, which I have something to say about that later in this movie, because who came out first? Because there's a little sound sting in this movie. Oh, yeah. That I was like, the fuck was that? Yeah, it was the the height of the slasher craze, and and all the critics were shitting on any slasher movie. They absolutely hated this movie. Uh, I had no chance, and I believe it failed miserably in the box office, so... That's why the director probably never did anything else. Yeah, I uh, I reached out to Grant Kramer and I asked him since this was the height of the slasher boom and you know, you know movies based on holidays were very popular. This had all the ingredients for the franchise that they tried to make. I was like, was there ever even any talk about doing a part two? And he was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he responded to you on Twitter. Nice guy. Wow. I appreciated that. That's Shout cool. out to Grant Kramer. So you think like before Gary Marshall started turning every movie, every holiday into like a romantic comedy? They were like, we're going to turn every rom- every holiday into a slasher movie. And that that's what was happening. Yep. Literally every holiday you could think of, there's a slasher movie based on it. So the only My way... My Bloody Valentine, one of the higher points. That one's a great one. Yeah, even the remake wasn't that bad. Yeah. It was enjoyable in 3D. And that was something that deserved to be a franchise. Is there a Boxing Day Massacre? I'm, you know, <laughs> Boxing Day. I got to look into the... That, <laughs> that would be, be great. Cool. Yeah. This guy, like, the boxer just like goes... <laughs> like runs around punching everyone in the audience. <laughs> It's all people clean up Christmas. <laughs> Knocking their blocks off left and right. <laughs> well, I think the only natural evolution is eventually you have to turn all romantic comedies into slashers. Uh, That's the next craze, you know. We're going to have like Made in Manhattan where it comes out that uh, Jennifer Lopez was the maid hiding the bodies, you know. <laughs> just because it's a love story doesn't mean there can't be a decapitation or two. Yeah, just like this movie, you know. It's a love story, I would say. Love actually massacre that'd be yeah the love actually thank god i mean just fucking end it you know then i have to hear people talking about it every year yeah nobody talking about this year because it's off netflix oh yeah (laughs) what did somebody someone finally took it down yeah they took it off oh i thought maybe somebody sexually assaulted somebody or something in the movie i was like such a big cast maybe (laughs) 
Not yet. You no, know, they keep the ranch on there, and that's where that, that guy from that Danny 70 Masterson. show, Danny yeah. Masterson, yeah. raped everybody on that show. <laughs> Can you head me? Man with this aside during the, <laughs> during the okay, show. Just, look at just these two <laughs> just talking about it. Aside. I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. I'm referring to my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, he says I don't have to talk to you guys. <laughs> I don't have to answer any of your questions. Well, you're you're hiding your secret, huh? I've got many. I'm just. It was just a dick pic. We can move forward. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Okay, guys. So the movie have starts out. Have you seen out, anything smaller? <laughs> the movie starts out with that Canon logo. You know you're in good hands. Uh, Hughes was excited because you've liked their other movies, so you're like, all right, Sign here quality. we go. Then we zoom in. The first shot of the movie is we zoom into a Holiday Inn, <laughs> which, by the way, I know this Holiday Inn. It's very close. Is it a Paramus? A number of times. You felt right at home. I was like, that's the Holiday Inn. Uh, They zoom in. Listeners, uh, Mike lives at a Holiday Inn. (laughs) Things aren't going well for Mike. Okay, so here's the thing, though. It's product placement, right? Sure. Intentionally? Well, I think it's the same kind of product placement we see often. It was just like, uh, you know, putting a Pepsi on the nightstand. Yeah. Hey, you know, maybe they'll give us some money for it. So, okay, here's what Holiday Inn wants you to remember about their business. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing we see is their logo, and then the next thing we see is a woman being murdered. (laughs) 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 Your one-stop chop. By the way, by a mysterious person that the door just opens randomly... And also the faucets leak. So this is a great advertisement for Holiday Inn. They're like, hey, uh, you know, stay here. Uh, the celebrities stay here. We have, like, New Year's celebrations. But also but you might be killed. if you're looking for killed. a stay that is downright Hitchcockian, Holiday Inn. Look no further. So the, the first thing, though, is we go to, so this lady, Diane, we find out she's like a celebrity. And she's doing some sort of... New Year's Eve show. Yeah, yeah she's like the Cat Corbett of K Rock. She's like Blaze, is what her name is. Her name Blaze is Blaze in the Blaze. movie. Her um, stage name. Yeah. But they do, yes, they do mention K Rock at one point, which well, it's is Southern a local California station. in the 80s. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Where's Ronnie Bingenheimer in all this? That would have been yeah. way better. Ronnie Bingenheimer and Jed the Fish are running around. <laughs> Rodney Bangenheimer should have been evil. <laughs> oh, can you imagine Rodney calling Rodney. <laughs> hey, everybody. You can call me evil. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Every hour on the hour, you're going to die. All right. Oh, big wham, bam. All right. I'm going to kill someone you know. You don't know me, Blaze. All right. What did I win? Rodney on the Rock is now on Sirius, so you can find him. He does. He really spins old, old records. Well, all right. On a station five people listen to. <laughs> How does this thing work? <laughs> okay. Well, I write, <laughs> she can't be that great of a celebrity because she's staying at the Holiday Inn. Absolutely. So, I mean, <laughs> she's a little lower level. This is more of a public access well, show. Well, that's where the show is. Again, this can't be that big. Well, like, this is this definitely is, not New, Dick Clark's New Year's Rock. No, and Eve. this, this is, is like more like local MTV affiliate. Two. Not even MTV2. <laughs> this is like Channel 50, <laughs> you know. In between VH1. Which, have you ever Netflix. watched one of those like public access New Year's Eve party shows? They had one? They, they have those? Out here, out here in California, like KOCE did one on like Channel 50. Which is like, the one I watched a couple years ago was hosted by Jamie Kennedy, and two people uh, got in a fist oh fight in the background God. as they were signing off. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got pissed drunk, and like there were times when the... You could look this up on YouTube, uh. like Jamie Kennedy New Year's Eve, because it was a shit show. Like There was times <laughs> when the mics were live, and they didn't know. Oh, God. They didn't know that the, that they were on, that they got back from commercial break. Yeah. So, like, Jamie Candy's like, bitching about some kind of, like, deal he's making with sounds, somebody. Sounds about right. <laughs> it's amazing. And in the, in the background, at the very end, you could see somebody just get clocked. <laughs> wow. Oh, I, was it Macy Gray performed on it? And she was shithoused. Oh, God. And so she's just doing well, she's crowd always work. shithoused now. Yeah, she's but done. especially on that show. Come on, man. Don't fucking give me shit, dude. I gotta have my first kid. There's no camera to work. To work on oh, it is. The show. It should be right here. Roman the new right here. Came out Where's our camera guy? It's called Fairly Odd Christmas. Okay. As a live action. Where's our Where's our stage manager? Jamie, don't fuck into the mic. I can hear you. You ready to go? All right. Welcome back to 2013. What time is it? 12 15. 11 15. What are you guys gonna do at midnight? Why don't you? Why don't you just be early? Ten nine eight seven six five four three two one. Uh, here we go. What's your name, sir? Talon, motherfucking bro. Oh. Hey, it is New Year's Eve, 2013. What is your name? His mother. Can I ask you something? 
Do you like white boys? I love the hell out of some white people. You, you love the hell? You know what they say? Is it true what they say? You know, they say once you go black. You never go back. Yeah, well, I'm saying you should try white. I love white. Because it'll keep your vagina very tight. Bleep that. Bleep that. God bless you, and we'll see you in 2024. Good night. Bye. There's a fight. It's ending with a fight. It's ending with a fight. God, please. God bless it. Get out. Go to a cartoon. Jesse, come down. Happy New Year, everybody. Good night. All so we're at the Holiday Inn. Uh, in Burbank. <laughs> the Burbank Holiday Inn. The Burbank Holiday Inn. And they're doing like some sort of show, like again, either some sort of cable access or MTV2, something like that, man, where nobody's going to watch. They're getting her makeup ready, and this makeup is starting to border on Kabuki. Yeah, it's like, you can stop now. Like, she looks like Gene Simmons at this point. <laughs> the makeup they're throwing on her. And uh, her assistant is panicking about the timing of everything, and she tells him, hey, uh, do me a favor, drop a loot and relax. She's borderline like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, almost. This is turning into a drag show real quick. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay, so we learn she's like talking to somebody on the phone, and it's like you find out it's like her husband, and he's not going to make it because he's in Palm Springs. And at this point, I'm like, none of this makes any sense. It's very confusing at the moment. If people it, are just yelling things at me. Then we cut to that random lady dying. She, yeah, that lady's interesting. She's got these like hair beads, kind of like the, the front tire of a kid's bike, yeah. jingling yeah, yeah. every time she moves. Like, yeah. She went to yeah. vacation in the Caribbean and have you ever seen got the, movie, the braids. Have you ever seen the movie 10 with Bo Derek? Yeah, That's yeah. The she's hair. going for yeah. one of those looks. Yeah, she is. She's doing the Bo Derek, I guess. Uh, Bo Derek, so, Rick James. And so to, Holiday uh, and Security. Yeah, very Rick James. Yeah. Holiday and Security, not great. Well, first of all, <laughs> the great. fucking faucets leak, which is one thing, <laughs> because she's sitting in the bathroom and she's like, oh, that fucking shower again, right? Mm-hmm, and then yeah. she turns it off and then she her front door opens, right? So, you know, fuck keys, right? Just <laughs> Hey, it was 1980. It was 1979. It was different. Do you yeah. think a holiday is like, no, 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 the keys work. God damn it. What did you guys do? Like, they had no idea. They're like, all right, well, come on down to the premiere, Mr. Holiday. <laughs> And he's sitting, in the, he's sitting in the audience just like, the fuck? And so basically her, her door gets open. A man pops out of her shower and kills her. And this guy, we don't see exactly what this person looks like, but he is wearing like five jackets. Like he looks like 90s wrestler, the repo man. <laughs> and it's weird to have a guy hiding in the shower wearing that many layers. Yeah. But there was no buildup, really. Oh, the leaky faucet, the door opens, death. She's dead. Yeah, we kind of just sped through a, a very... Uh, a very cliche, like, archetypal slasher movie death. Just to get you set for what kind of movie we're about to watch. Just so it's you can of... identify the movie within the first three minutes of you watching it. You're like, oh, I know this movie. Yeah. yeah. Or it's, it's just one like, of these movies. It's a good okay. analogy for staying at a Holiday Inn. You know, yeah. it's just like, you just want the night to be over as quick as possible <laughs> and get the fuck out. By the way, this episode of Grind been brought to you by Holiday Inn. Yeah, mm-hmm. sleep like the dead. <laughs> sleep like the dead. <laughs> well done, Thank you, Hughes. Well done. Well <laughs> done. Formerly uh, Econo Lodge is slogan. <laughs> so the, you, know, you think people are going on a road trip, they're like, Holiday Inn, no, I saw that in that movie. Fuck that. Let's go to the Motel 6. No, huh? actually, Holiday Inns are frequented by the blind because really? they are um, all laid out the same. Huh. I thought you were going to say because they look huh. terrible all the same. <laughs> no. So that's why they don't spend any money on the decor. They're just like, yeah, hey, fuck it. Yeah. Nobody can see it, right? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> It's, it's, so it's like Beverly Hills Vamp. Everything's covered in white, like, cloth. <laughs> Where you go? No one's lived here for a while. So. <laughs> no one's lived here for a while. <laughs> so, so then this the murder sequence start. really doesn't do anything in this movie. It, it, this character wasn't important. It's really just... It, we the know story, there's a murder. Yeah, the, the murderer is doing a warm-up kill. I get that. You gotta have the cold open murder. It's a slasher movie. <laughs> it's him you stretching gotta. before he goes. Jason's gotta kill those kids fucking, okay. and you gotta have somebody die. He's gotta take out a hitchhiker movie. on the way. Yes. So the credits start. Great song, by the way. The way. Oh, love it. oh man, love it. Okay, and now we are just basically the opening of Savage Streets because mm-hmm. we're rolling down Hollywood Boulevard. And holy I looked, shit, by the it's way, the scars. Yes, yep. it, it is. is the scars, yep. and we are on Hollywood Boulevard. Yep. I did confirm it. That's fantastic. Yep, shared universe. So they are riding Part around of the Eisner Cinematic Universe <laughs> <laughs> in their convertible, just like the scars, yep. just partying it up, going woo. Somebody... Running over Linnea Quigley. No, okay. Obviously, we know how the end of this is gonna. And with the van, because at one point a van passes them and a girl, it looks like she's trying to get out of the van and she's topless. <laughs> like she's like, let me out. And they're just like, hey. Think, yeah. This movie answered that question for us already. The stealth arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They painted it black. 
1980, they're like, you know, we can get away with a lot more. Yeah. Bobby, they keep pulling us over with this yellow. <laughs> they're looking for yellow, Bobby. <laughs> it took us three years to figure it out. <laughs> So, the, okay, they pull up to a Holiday Inn. By the way, okay, so there's these, like, punk guys, right? One of them's wearing an IRA shirt. And I was like, Jesus. Like, that's topical and also odd. Yeah. That's punk as hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesus. I dig man. it. Uh, so they mess with this door guy, right? This and he's door like, guy may not be human. Like, his <laughs> delivery is so flat. Like, he's an animatronic. He's like, tickets. Have tickets. Yeah, tickets. tickets. Have tickets. Have tickets. Tickets. And they're just uh, hey, I was a ticket them. taker at Disneyland. That's how we all are. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> and and so, I guess, referencing that, the leader of this punk gang pulls a switchblade and goes, don't get excited. But it's not a switchblade. It's a comb switchblade. Ah. Did anybody do that to you at Disneyland? They, like, put it right under your nose. They're like, hey, I'm going to cut you. That was part of my training. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, stand still, Chris. Stand still. Right. Chris was like a buck. Buckingham Palace guard. <laughs> so like, Only he stood in front of the Country Bear Jamboree. The, the training for Disneyland, they like make you stand still when they put your hand over a candle, like a lit candle, and yeah. they're just like, just hold it as long as you can. Oh, son. they pour the wax on my balls, my nipples, everything. And then he had to put his hand in a box. It's only skin. It grows back. <laughs> Is that a Dune reference? It was a Dune nice. reference. Was... <laughs> okay, so then we cut to my Diane's man. room. Uh, her son shows up with flowers for her. Okay, so the bitch son. This guy Derek. is the fucking bitch, the bitchiest character I think we've seen in a movie yet. Her, the bitch son shows up. He's got like flowers and he's like, hey, mom, how you doing? And she's like, oh, it's good to see you. And he's like, you never pay attention to me. And it's like, dude, she's getting ready for a fucking TV I mean, show. She, she kid. does ice him she's pretty like hard. in the green though. room. Because he's like, mom, I got some great news. She goes, that's nice, dear. Okay, though, but she's about to go on TV in about five minutes. Yeah. And she's like, I yeah. got to get ready. Do you see? I don't look like Tim Curry yet. They got to keep going. <laughs> He's also like more 30. Coats. Yeah. It's like, get over yourself, guy. Like, you're a fucking adult. Grow he, weirdly up. enough, while he's playing younger, he looks older than he did in Killer Clowns, which was seven right? years later. Oh, my God, he yeah. He looks like a guy in his mid-30s. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. He's got his hair all bleached blonde. He's a weird-looking dude in this movie. Yeah, when I show up to my mom's house, I'm like, Mom, Mom, I got news. And she's always just, oh, you know, I need to go. Can confirm. We've seen him do this. <laughs> so he just basically says, he's like, I got a role on a TV show. And she's like... Just she's not listening because she's still putting on her outfit and her makeup and everything. She's like, that's great. I'll talk to you later. She walks out, and he's just all fucking pissed about it. He's all upset. And the next thing, I believe we just cut from there. Then we go to the Hollywood Hotline show. The Hollywood Hotline with New Wave Rock Show Marathon. Is that the full title? Yes. Of it? Good God. Fantastic. Imagine that in a TV guide. <laughs> <laughs> Would watch. Uh, so, <laughs> and Is it, it on TV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see a camera. There is a camera, yeah, but yeah. It's, they're plugging K Rock. Yeah, it's they're like also on K Rock. So there's it's like a simulcast. simulcast. Yeah. yeah, this is like uh, channel fifty two or tune your FM dial to one hundred six point seven. So, hey, mom, I'm on TV. All right, <laughs> <laughs> here on the hotline with Blaze. <laughs> they should have just had Roddy play her son. <laughs> <laughs> mom, I got some good news. All right. <laughs> So apparently, Wick, wham, bam. <laughs> this is some New Year's Eve t- TV thing. Apparently, it looks more like a telethon because they got like these okay. phones set up. Yeah, but the host is answering all the okay. phones. Yes, it's uh, so the show. <laughs> She's is... doing like the Jerry Lewis New Year's Eve show. Yeah. The show is like a mix between the Jerry Lewis thon, like a punk show. <laughs> no yeah. new wave. New wave is not punk. <laughs> new wave. <laughs> Hey, it's like, still rock and roll to but me. But they're all moshing, by the way. Like, everybody's hey, moshing. I mean, it could be. New Wave, I mean, Black Flag played with the Bangles. It worked. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's K-Rock, and they were playing punk and New Wave at yeah. the time. It could work. It makes sense. Work. Yeah. It's the almost acoustic Christmas. Except yeah. for the callback. White Pride is very uh, New Wave by the Black Flag that they did play on K-Rock. They did play it on K-Rock. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but the whole thing that's not New Wave or punk about any of this is the fucking callback where <laughs> people are calling in Voting on their favorite song. And by the way, did you catch the first song that gets requested? Oh, yeah. We don't want no education. We don't need no education, yeah. which is not the title yeah, of that song. I was going to say, it's not the title <laughs> of that song. Nor is it something that would have been played on K-Rock in 1980. And it didn't come out in 1980. Did so, it? No. Because <laughs> it was, what's your favorite song of this the year? year? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this person <laughs> living in a shelter, I don't know. <laughs> like, has so, no idea what year it is, what kind of music this radio station plays. Maybe because you're like hawking this shadow band, maybe they have them call up and mention that song. You know, the song you play three times in the movie 
full all the way through. No, they mention a song that... Do you know that they're mentioning songs? Because I heard, uh, is that brought to you by Shadow or whatever? They said Shadow and then Made in Japan. And I'm like, is that the name of the song? Yeah, ma- no, name of the band. It, that's the name of the other band. But yeah, yeah. they, they mention them at the same time. <laughs> and at one po- No, because at one part they say, and it, like they're doing a, a crossover between Shadow and Made in Japan. We're making a super like, group. What? <laughs> Hmm. Like, yeah, all of a sudden the super group has formed on it, you know. <laughs> it's the punk version of the Eagles, I guess. Oh, God. Well, uh, Eagles I, don't, of I, I don't approve of any version of the Eagles. Neither, no, do, neither I. do I. They're, all yeah. their solo stuff is better than the Eagles. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So hell should have just stayed frozen over, yeah. and that's, they never played again. That's Glenn Frey would on still be alive. <laughs> It wasn't for the Eagles, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the wrong they, boy died. <laughs> that's that's when they mentioned K Rock. People call it in for their songs, and I how, right? How is this entertaining? Because all I can see is her just walking around the stage. She's like, "All right, let's take another phone call." And, and how she could you fucking on, hear over that crowd on the phone? <laughs> well, apparently they patch the phone in directly to the TV, or maybe they don't, because there's multiple times when somebody's going to call up, and I don't know if anybody knows that it's calling except for the host, who's a Apparently, I mean, have you tried to take a call like when the band's not even playing on a concert? It's fucking, it's, it can't be done. You know that new sound you've been looking for? <laughs> it's white noise. Was there any? That's racist. <laughs> was, no, that's the third band. Chris, you know, maybe they turned the monitors down. You don't know. <laughs> so do you think there was any part like the the telethons where Jerry Lewis would answer the phone or something? Did he ever do that? Go like, hello, lady. And oh, answer I'm the sure. Phone. <laughs> and some old lady's like, is this Jerry? And, and some asshole, the voice modulator starts cranking him. <laughs> He's like, oh, you God. listen to me, you little shit. <laughs> it's just king of comedy all over again. I'd love it. So, okay. These people are calling in and then a guy calls up and he calls himself evil. And he's got, I don't know how this voice modulator works, but yeah. he's jammed like a piece of metal in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah, apparently you just talk through a straw. And she like, goes, you know, this? do you have a song that you want to request? Is it like he a goes, mouth harp? No. <laughs> it's a mouth harp. <laughs> it's like blues travelers. <laughs> John, John Popper has <laughs> called the show. <laughs> <laughs> to give her the runaround. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. So John Popper calls up and he's called himself evil now. It's the 80s. He hasn't come, you know. And she's she's playing along. She's like, all right, evil. And she asks for his vote on the song. He doesn't have a song. He says he doesn't care about that. He wants to call and let her know that he's going to commit murder. And at this point, she should have just hung up. Right. Like, and he would have just tried Dick Clark or something. <laughs> like, maybe he'd move on to the next show. You don't know. Because, like... Why would you keep the guy on the line? It's obviously like a crank call. Just fucking hang it up. I don't know. I mean, look at the way the rest of the show's been going for her that night. This is the most entertaining thing that's happened. (laughs) Well, the same thing with terrorism. You give them the attention, they're just going to want it more. (laughs) He says, I'm going to kill somebody at midnight. Somebody that she knows. Kill someone close to her. And she doesn't ask what midnight at that point. No, nah, she doesn't like, we got also Okay, so she also says something like, we're going to do like five midnights on this show. So we're going to do we're New gonna York. We're going to celebrate for every time zone. We're doing Chicago. We're doing Aspen. <laughs> just like... <laughs> the same time as Chicago. Where they like, or no, is it mountains? It is mountain. It's mountain. Where they just like, what's a, what's a mountain? They just wanted to find out what's a who, significant city in that time who zone. Who lives over there in mountain? Does anybody know anybody in Mountain Zone? Aspen? I think. Well, don't they cut away and they show somebody up on the mountain? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's their correspondent. It's just like, we're counting it down up here on the snow. And the shots they show are just people skiing with candles. Like... (laughs) It's a candlelight vigil for somebody who got <laughs> yes. who got eaten by that snowman who gets you yeah. when you reach the bottom of the hill. Oh, you too. You know, like in the old computer game. So apparently in Aspen, they're just, like you said, holding a candlelight vigil on skis. And they're like, all right, that's the Aspen that's how people. They, that's how they but party in Aspen. That's the bathroom Eve. break. Yeah. All right. So just remember <laughs> that one. Uh, and then we're doing a New Year's here. Do you think they'd also do Hawaii too, or they just give up? It's like, it hit L.A., so... Well, that's the last line of the movie. And they have it too good in Hawaii, so no one wants to talk to him. Just, no. That's when they switched over to Rodney. He was doing the Hawaii feed. (laughs) It's a luau. (laughs) Now we're cutting to Rodney on Hawaii. I'm getting laid. (laughs) Okay. Then she goes, hey... We're talking to the pet shop boys. (laughs) All right. Here's the next band, uh, Shadow. Hell yes. And then they just Shadow. play this, the same fucking song we heard two minutes ago in the credits. Oh, just feel it. All the way through. You got to feel again. that riff. It's got to be in your soul. So they play the whole song again, uh, the song you heard in the beginning of this episode. 
And then she runs backstage. She's all scared. So Diane's like, oh, my God. Uh, and then she goes up to her assistant or manager or something. She's like, there's a crazy guy that called his murderer. He's like, oh, come on. You know. What, we've never had that before? He's and like, don't worry about it. It's cops all over the place. And because it's like 80s and New Wave is hitting pretty hard, and we're looking at Shadow, we're looking at Blaze, we're looking at every single person in this movie is contouring. It's kind of amazing. Like, yeah, There's not is. a character in this film, man or woman, young or old, that doesn't have like streaks of makeup on their cheeks. Yeah. So my question is, is at this point in the movie, Yvonne is already dead. How come she was taken out first and it had nothing to do with the midnight like, I, theme I of the movie? I truly think it was a warm-up kill. Uh, it did have... Oh, you're right. No, it had nothing to do with the midnight. You're right. No. You're right. It well, was just you to know, get a, you gotta is, feel for it. It's wait, to limber up. Yeah, that's a good point. Hughes. The Hughes clues. It is a Hughes clues. But isn't there like some sort of... Uh, time zone past yeah. East Coast or something. <laughs> it's midnight somewhere everywhere. Australia, you know what I mean? It happens way before <laughs> no, it happens to it, us. Just call us an Australian number. <laughs> oh, no, not again. <laughs> you know, like how they say it's five o'clock somewhere. It's midnight somewhere, you know? Every hour on the hour. Evil's putting a call into Peru. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to kill someone you know. So, so, they're like, who is this? So then we cut to the phone booth and we immediately get to know the killer. So we know evil. Yeah, we're not doing the, yeah. uh, you know, while the slasher boom's hitting, we don't have a whole lot of, like, the mask killer, like, the who yeah. it isn't a big part of yeah. this. Like the and, motorcycle and that's rider? A, yeah. Yeah, but that's a, that's clearly on purpose so that the, sh- the, the, the shocking twist is all that much more powerful, I think. Yeah, so, I, I'm glad that this, yeah. well, I mean, the killer will put on a mask at one point, but yeah. I'm glad that it's not a masked killer. I, yeah, I kind of so, like being like, it's more like maniac in this sense. Yeah, where it's like, which took me off We guard. don't know who this guy is, but we yeah. know what he does. Yeah. So we meet the guy. His, he calls himself evil. That's all we know. And mm-hmm. he sneaks into a sanitarium uh, where the all the patients are watching the cable access. They're like, the only channel we get in here is K-Rock. Yeah. yeah K-Rock we have stereotype TV, loons are just sort of TV. dancing to this <laughs> shitty public access New Year's Eve party. Yeah, even the patients are moshing around. And I like that uh, evil <laughs> sneaks into the sanitarium when the cartoon cook isn't looking. Yeah, this guy this who's like just sleazy banging dude on who's stuff just like and... cursing to himself and still wearing an apron at eleven o'clock at night. <laughs> I guess it would be like eight o'clock at night at this point. Um, so we see these mental patients moshing, and if you saw it, there's one guy with like the toy was like Santa in a wheelchair. Yeah, it was I think very so, yeah. odd, and it was like some sort of wind up Santa in a wheelchair toy, and yeah, then I... the guy smashes it with a shoe. Does any of the I think me- that's Harry from Christmas Evil. <laughs> We go, he cuts into the sanitarium, and then, like, this nurse goes for a smoke or something. She leaves the party, and then this... So our killer evil comes out dressed as a doctor, and he's like, hey, I'm the new doctor. (laughs) And she's like, what? And he goes, yeah, "Yeah, they transferred me here on New Year's Eve, right? And she's like, all right, I'll buy it. And he's like, hey, he's carrying a boombox. Yeah, and she's like, oh, what, you bring your own music, doctor? And And he said, I always come well-equipped. And so, yeah, he carries around this radio, like just, uh, it's like he's carrying around like a giant, like a tape player with him. Like it's very big. It's somewhere and between a ghetto blaster and a talk board. Yeah. Mickey Bad thing was like a, a, like at least a grand. Yeah. No, it definitely. Because it records, by the way. Yeah. Oh, wow. Magic's crazy. And then he says, hey, how about we go drink this champagne and fuck, huh? <laughs> And she's ready to go for and it. And he pulls a full bottle of champagne out of his thing, and she's like, okay. Man, whatever. this is a better doctor than Patch Adams. <laughs> <laughs> He's got booze and tunes. Uh, and, so, and let me tell you, man, that fish jumped right in the boat. She was like, yeah. Like, no no worries, man. <laughs> well, she's like, what am I going to go drink champagne she's, or hang out with the well, crazy she's gotta people? she's got to work on New Year's. She's, she's a little pissed about it. I get yeah. that. So you know, handsome ass Kip Niven shows up and he's got he's got a bottle with him and some tunes. Yeah, let's go in the broom closet. <laughs> so they pour, they go into some room and they start they pour the bubbly into the pill cups that they'd give people for their medication. <laughs> so they're having their meds. And they we cut back to the TV show and I it's really slowed down now that a ballad has come on. You missed it. So when they're when he's seducing the nurse, he turns on his radio and it starts playing this blues number. He's listening to the show. Yeah. yeah, on K-Rock. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh. Because he's following what's going on. Because it's simulcast. I thought it was just some random song, and we came back to that show. No, nah, he's got the show live, so he can hear what's going on. Right. right. So that fucking song just is just completely out of place the entire time. Shadow yeah, is just jamming. Yeah. It's, what do you call it, uh, diegetic or something? Die, whatever you call it, where it's actually in the movie. Like, I don't remember the term. It's the term, yeah. but yeah, it's like actually in the movie. He's playing it on the radio, and then it's in there. 
That, that went over my head. I did not yeah. make the connection that those two were the same. But it's like, I think Shadow's going to get a talking to, though. <laughs> they were brought on here to be this awesome right? hair metal band, oh, yeah. and now we're just going to noodle for 20 minutes? Yeah, it's like... They will not be invited back for 1981. <laughs> like, you're a little too chill right now. Those guys are coming down on the drugs right now. They oh. need to get back up. It is like when you go to a punk show, and they're like, this is our slow one, and you're just like, fuck oh, Fuck you. Or fuck. this is one off the new album. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> God. One, so I just you go to, you go to the out. shows where a band has like one fucking song yeah. and the rest of it's just garbage. Yeah. It was like when you'd go to an adolescent show and they oh, play God. Welcome to Reality and you're just like, oh, oh God. Or like, this is OC's up the new burning. one. OC Confidential. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, they really slowed the room down. Instead of moshing, now everybody's kissing. And then we go backstage and the cops are talking to Diane. And I love this. They blame her for the killer calling. Oh, this lieutenant's great. <laughs> she's like, he like, he like victim blames and slut shames and yeah. does it all, man. He's, she's like, some guy called up. He said he's going to murder somebody. He's like, well, you know, that's your audience, lady. I mean, you people do this. This oh, is your fault. he's got a fault. real problem with these punkers. Yeah, he's like, you know, you go on stage looking like that. You're asking for oh, it, right? Jesus. Yeah, she's like, someone just threatened to kill me. He goes, well, you are a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, lieutenant. <laughs> And, and 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 then uh, her assistant turns to the lieutenant and his deputy and is like, "Forgive her, she's a little uptight." I'm like, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> God, a man threatened damn. to murder her on the phone. <laughs> well, somebody close to her, Bobby. Come on, and not her directly. <laughs> But how many of those calls do you think they got that night? I mean, I think, what's the running tally? More people calling up jacking off into the phone or more people calling up saying they're going to kill her on the phone? Oh, that's neck and neck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there might have been more of those than votes for songs by the end of the night. <laughs> so Diane storms off and calls her room and the bitch son answers. And he's like, Mom, I got to tell you something important. And she's like, somebody's trying to like murder me or she's something. I'm kind of dealing with some shit right now, Derek. Yeah. Can you... Why does she even call him? Why the does she call him? Oh, she's... No, I don't know why she calls no. him, actually. Mm. So but, that they can interact with each other. But he says something... But there's no reason in the story. He says something like, oh, I tried to call dad, but his number's busy or something. Uh, and then he's like, I really got something important to tell you. And she's like, just tell me later. I'm doing a TV show. I'm on a fucking TV show right now. I'll <laughs> Live. Give you, yeah, I'll give you attention tomorrow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so they hang up, and now Derek's trying not to turn into a werewolf or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought he was killing himself mm. because he grabs three pills, puts them in his mouth. And he just kind of vibrates. Yeah, and he goes like, yeah, like grabbing his head and yeah, everything. Like, Goodbye, crew world. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney's killed himself. <laughs> Rodney killed himself on the K Rock New Year's Eve countdown. <laughs> I'll show you, mom. <laughs> So Rodney uh, on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so the pills were like nothing. Was it even supposed to be a red herring or, or it's Flintstones like, vitamins? Because typically, no, it's when, to show that he had mental issues yeah. and he's being medicated for it. Typically, when somebody goes, I got something important to tell you, and Twice. there's pills in front of him and a cup of water, and then they hang up and he takes them, it's like, oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's pulling a psychomania, but it just ended up being di diet pills, so yeah. you can't overdose on him, I guess. Yeah, no matter how hard you believe. So the nurse in Evil, uh, they're making out in this room, and she says, hey, I've only known you for 10 minutes. And he goes, does it matter? And she goes, not tonight. Or she goes, tonight? No. And, and it's like, you know. It's a nice exchange. It's and like we cut back year. to the main floor, and they're putting party hats on the crazies. <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of fucked yeah. up. Yeah. And also giving them, like, blow things. Yeah, it's like, and it's awkward, man. <laughs> yeah, the nurse is, like, putting them in their mouth. Like, I know you can barely it's, even function, but yeah, here, put this in your mouth and blow it's on it. It's unsettling. They really bo does bother me. Just put your lips together and Real blow. sorry about what happened to you over in Vietnam. Here, yeah. wear this hat. <laughs> Wear this rice hat looking hat. Yeah. And we're going to make a bunch of loud noises and bangs. And we're going to see what happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> they go uh, back to Evil and Nurse. And as the countdown for New York is happening, he hits record on his boombox, which mm -hmm. is odd because he's recording and playing the boombox at the same time. Well, I'm, I used to record my. Radio. It worked that way? Yeah. Okay. But you could oh, also okay. use a microphone to record what you're doing. See, I don't that, know about that. That's yeah. why it's that's a grand. Part, that's the magic thing. Is like It's recording the sounds of the room and the sound on the radio Do you remember at how the same close time. your microphone had to be on those old recorders to get it to actually pick up voice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were just playing with Chris's talk boy on the Patreon, and you got to like you got to put your mouth around that thing. Oh, yeah. Like you got to get that all the way down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> you gotta want it. <laughs> no, it ain't as extendable for nothing. You gotta you know? work that yeah, shaft. It takes practice. <laughs> and so uh, he's got the countdown for the East Coast going on there, and we're counting down like the Royal Rumble. You know, five, four, three, two, and the second it hits one, he pulls out his switchblade and he starts stabbing her. And they do this thing where with each stab, you hear a party horn coming from the crazies <laughs> in the other room. It's a <laughs> synced <laughs> up. <laughs> then we come back to the TV show, more music and moshing. Evil calls the show back, and Diane's on the phone again because apparently she answers all the calls. Mm-hmm. And she um, clarifies with him, hey, you were just jabbing me earlier, right? <laughs> By the way, do you notice that like there's, so there's three girls taking phone calls, and when Diane's answering this phone, if you look back, the one girl in the middle whose phone she's answering is giving her like a death stare. Like, yeah. fuck you for answering my phone. This is the only thing I get to do here. All right? Is that another red herring as for the who is it? <laughs> yeah, like this girl was leaving the stage. <laughs> Where does Francine keep going? <laughs> so he calls back the show. Yeah, she's like, you were kidding around, right? And he's like, no. He goes, listen to the replay. And he plays it over the air. And again, is this going out live on the air? I don't think it or- is. This is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 situation where like everyone's <laughs> got to listen to someone get murdered on the radio now? Yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah. That would be great. It's I mean, that's another night at K Rock. So. While you're watching the show, you're <laughs> listening to her hear a friend of hers get murdered. <laughs> Highest ratings they've ever gotten. I can guarantee you that right now. <laughs> so they tell her, he tells her where the body is, and he's like, all right, have fun. Uh, and then the nurse, one of the nurse, the one forcing party hats on crazy people, <laughs> uh, walks into this room and finds her dead in a closet. Yeah, she's been propped up. It's like the end of a Jason movie. It would have been good if she had like a party favor like down her throat. Oh my God, he should have put a party hat on but, her. It like, would have been funnier yeah. if he dressed everybody up like New Year's. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Left like, everyone with a hat and a horn. Yeah. The horns are going through her eyes and the party hat's coming out of Jason her mouth. I did that to somebody. Oh, oh really? Movies. It's his calling card, you know? He yeah. needs one. That's his problem. <laughs> he needs a clock set to midnight. <laughs> and hanging around the neck like yeah, flavor flavor. Yeah. <laughs> like a yes. flavor flame clock set and to that's, midnight. That's the... the k- 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 ma- ma- is you hear the ticking of that <laughs> clock he's wearing. I would love it. Or it's like the respirator from My Bloody Valentine. Mm-hmm. So then we go to the bitch son, and he's just being a little bitch, cutting up clothes. This is a weird one, because he starts weird, muttering man. to himself, and then he pulls a big nylon over his face, like he's going to go rob a quickie mark. Okay, so he's cutting it. He's like cutting it with scissors and then licking it, and he's like... I don't think those pills helped. No. 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 He no. accidentally took the psychotic instead of the anti He's taking Tic Tacs, as, this, as far as we know. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of tums he just swallowed. <laughs> he is cutting it with the switchblade, by the way, which we see quite a few switchblades in this movie. It's like, it, that's the weird thing about this is that they're kind of setting up potential people for the whodunit that yeah. doesn't exist because we can see the killer's face. Although they ruined the punk guy because they revealed it was a comb. Yeah. Right in the beginning, because they could have had him as another red and there's herring. really no reason for all these people to have switchblades, because it doesn't lead to anything. Yeah, I mean, they're highly illegal we in California. Yeah. Doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that and brass knucks, you can't do it. Uh, he puts his stocking over his head, and then he puts on like an earring or something, and then he's like... Yeah, I think he pierced his ear through the stocking. And he's yeah. like, now what do you think? Like, he's doing his best Buffalo Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> he puts on goodbye horses and starts dancing around Chops the road. himself in for the night. Sucks himself in. And then we go back to the TV show, another song. I write more music and then dot, 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 more music <laughs> <laughs> featuring Shadow and Made in Japan. Yeah, doing a duet, apparently. And the, the lieutenant is talking to Blaze and he's like, it looks like this creep's for real. We found your friend. And then launches into way too many details. Yeah. Like, if, if a cop came to you and was like, we found your friend, your friend's been killed. Here's, here's what your friend looked like when we walked in the room, man. Yeah. It is fucked. He yeah, goes, but that only takes like 20 seconds of dialogue, yeah. and then we're it goes right through the and whole thing. And he's like, by the way, these, f- first of all, apparently anybody can get into your room. No room key or anything, and there's fucking leaky faucets all over the place, totally. right? Fuck this hotel. <laughs> And I'm, next like the they... fuck, I'm next to the fucking ice machine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they like had a problem with Holiday Inn, and yeah. they're like, you know what? We're going to give him a big middle finger. Fuck you, Holiday Inn. We're going to make this movie and talk about how shitty your hotel is. Oh, that'd be a great YouTube series where you just take places and you film the outside of them and then make a set of the inside and just make them shitty. <laughs> And like act like you're reviewing just them. another night at a holiday inn like they call down to the front desk they're like there's a murdered woman on this floor and it's like yeah you and everybody else <laughs> so we go to uh we go back to the bitch son with the stocking on his head and he's like now tearing up roses one by one and he's going goodbye horse. <laughs> i'd fuck me <laughs> 
<laughs> and so then evil, he puts on a fake mustache. Oh, that's, right? This disguise is awesome. And I'm like, why? This is the part in the movie where we, <laughs> where we, it, we just got some coins. Where it makes no sense. No, it's not that. It's This is the part of the movie where it becomes a weird comedy. It's like, like wh- now we're going to launch into this whole subplot of a serial killer having a rough night. Yeah, so Things just can't go right wh- for him. Why does he put on the mustache? Nobody knows who he is. I, just, I think it's just part of him having a good time, man. I think, just, I think this, oh, is, part of yeah. the, this is just evil's yeah. thing, man. He likes, to, he likes to party, and he likes to play dress up. Yeah, I mean, he's playing like the Hitman video game, okay? It's like everywhere he <laughs> I have goes. Notes, so he's basically Agent 47. <laughs> he's got to put on a disguise, even though he doesn't need one. He's like, he puts on like a fucking leisure suit and a, and a mustache and walks into leisure a... Leisure suit evil. Walks in. <laughs> walks into a disco club. Basically, his calling card is that all of his murders are like the setup to a joke. <laughs> And it could oh, be, totally. it could be like, something. Well, the priest walks into yeah. a. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. It could be something to do with the times, though, also. Like, where if you don't have a mustache and you go into that certain bar, you don't have machismo or something. It, to I where mean, if you go to a punk show with a mustache, true. you're true. fucking weird. Yeah. 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 He's a real chameleon, this guy. And it fit that bar to walk in there looking like that. Yeah. And it works because he spots this lady at the end of the bar, right? And he goes over and he lights her cigarette. And she's like, Oh, hi. How you doing? You look well equipped. And he says something. He says something like, "Do you know the time?" And then he goes like, "Oh, my my expensive watch never works. Right? The more you spend on it, the less it works. Am I right?" Uh, and she's like, "I don't know. I just have a Casio pickup artist <laughs> bullshit, man. <laughs> this guy's a real like- alpha. <laughs> I like your eyes, but they weren't so close together. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> it works every time. He goes into this thing about how he's like." Hey, uh, yeah, I only stopped in for one drink because I got to go to a, a party, you know, because I'm a business guy. He goes, you know who Eric Estrada is? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Pot? I'm sorry. Does somebody have like a problem with Eric Estrada? No, because, does someone not like chips? Because Ponterelli is the man in this time. All of a sudden, yeah. though, he starts going. He's like, yeah, you know, these fucking actors, fucking prima donnas. Well, it's to make it's it like, seem more realistic. <laughs> like they couldn't He can't get, act like he's fanboying about, about Ponch. Did, he's got a... Did Golden Globus like want Estrada for this movie or some he shit? And no. he turned yeah. him down and like, you know what? Fuck Estrada, right? We're gonna call him a prima donna you know and this and everything. This movie was gonna be called New Year's Eric, and now it's not. <laughs> yeah. We had to get this Kim guy, you know? It was gonna be Estrada going around picking up women and killing them. It was gonna be great. <laughs> I just wanna see Eric Estrada in the phone booth doing the call. <laughs> You can call me evil. <laughs> this is smiling all big. <laughs> and by the way, he won't even do the voice. This is the most convoluted story pickup line. Just say like you're his agent or so, because she's like, no, 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 no. I don't know him. Like as a friend, I'm a business guy. Like I, I take care of Mr. Estrada's investments in companies. And she's just like, so you're saying you don't have coke. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like so you're going to his party or something he's like yeah you know these hollywood types real prima donnas you don't get there on time you know they're gonna be fucking around and everything and he's like hey by the way you want to go and she's like oh i don't know if i should go and he's like yeah come on let's go and she's like well, i gotta go use the bathroom first he's like yeah okay so then uh we cut to backstage right um well we have wait, uh, we have the other band show up now. We have a musical number by Made in Japan uh doing their hit Dumb Blondes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which they shout every eight seconds. I think I wrote a song in high school called that. Were you a member of Made in Japan? In no, school? but I did have a song called that. Made in Orange County. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So yeah, that goes on for a while. They oh just yeah. Just yell that line over and over and then we cut back Dumb to the Blondes. bar. Uh, you should play that. Put that in there so they, sure. So our fans can hear the other great song in this <laughs> Go movie. Pogo out a window. So this has now turned into a threes all right with me. Yep. Because we go back to the <laughs> disco club and she's like, I'm going to bring my friend. And, and you okay? know, that's pretty smart. She's like, you know, you don't mind yeah. if I bring my friend Lisa with me? And he's like, what? Uh, uh, yeah, because this is that weird comedy thing that we're doing of like this guy. We know he's planning on murdering her, and now things just keep going wrong for him. Yeah, uh, you know, like the protagonist of our movie, we're just gonna throw some obstacles at him. Yeah. You know, because we're a, on his side. In a weird moment of uh, of uh, foresight, she's like, "What? You think I'm just gonna get in a car with a stranger?" And he's like, "Damn, she's not as stupid as I thought she was." <laughs> yeah, she's like, "I'm gonna get in a car with a stranger, go to a party with a stranger who says he knows Eric Estrada in the most flimsy story possible." You must think I'm stupid or something. <laughs> 
And so he's like, all right, whatever. Three's all right with me. Uh, they go backstage, <laughs> and the cops and Diane are listening to this giant reel-to-reel. Oh, I love it, because they listen so to good. this, and the cop looks at her very seriously and goes, he's apparently using some kind of voice <laughs> processor. Yeah, yeah so, fine work, detective. So they listen to his phone call back. You actually activated my Siri when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> so the real to real what what was the purpose of this was this like something the cops brought or is this a part of the show and they've stopped recording the audio for the show like what is this that's just how you recorded audios in those days i guess so i don't know well you know every time you watch Sean? movies <laughs> movies of that era every time they're like recording the call they always have like that big reel to reel like a on. giant reel to reel in the backstage and they're listening to it like it has speakers coming out of it by the way because there's no fucking speaker they're putting their ear yeah. to the gun you got to put your ear to the tape you mean, you didn't and, go and to it'll the, tell you you mean when you played the poison apple there wasn't a giant reel to reel in the alley after you guys yeah. played yeah. yeah, Southgate. Who knew? I'll show you. What, I'll, I'll tell you something that's weird. If you remember, so this movie, that's the reel to reel. You show that as yeah. the recording. If you remember Con Air, do you remember that recording device they had in there where he shoved it into the uh, police officer and kneeled him? That was a giant. Like compared to what we have now, it's like a talk boy. It was and, a and huge this guy's crotch. You know? Yeah. Oh, I, dude, I was just putting sides together. Now we can fit it into a little tiny. Now it's a phone. You it's less than a phone. It's a stamp. Yeah. There you go. I mean, you don't even need it. <laughs> Uh, so yes, they're listening to a reel to reel with no speakers, no headphones, with a band playing right in front of them, and they're just like, "Do you hear that phone call?" <laughs> and he's yeah, says he must be using some sort of voice modulator. And mm-hmm. she's like, "Whatever, you're the cops. I don't know why you're playing it for me. I already heard it. Like, yeah, I already know that I'm in danger. I already know that he killed somebody. You've already confirmed this. Why? Just, why do we need anything else? Like, why aren't the cops just like, we're on it? Yeah, go solve the case. What do you want from me? Like, he called me. Leave. It's it's odd to be like, you know, I know that he modified his voice, but did he sound familiar to you? <laughs> well, no. And then she says something like, he, he sounded evil. He's like, well, there's enough evil around here to fill Death Valley. <laughs> that was like, he, look, they were reaching for that one. Look, I, I, we do not need your type five to no. <laughs> give a little wink <laughs> to the camera. That, that's Death the whole, that's the whole thing about this movie is yeah. there is no need for filler <laughs> because they have enough of a concert to fill it with. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every time they need to like, they're yeah. like, wait, she's got to go to the bathroom and get her friend cut to a song, cut back. Yeah. So then we go to evil in the car. Um, he's cruising uh, Van Nuys like the chooch. Yeah. <laughs> He is in Van Nuys, by the way, if you look at the yeah. shooting locations. And, and he's doing these, like, facial pulls the whole time. I'm just like, oh, can you believe I'm stuck in this situation? Because she won't stop talking. Oh, she just goes on. She's like, I first moved here. And then the first time I saw the Pacific Ocean, I walked in with my dress on because I'm such an idiot. And, 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 and she's and, talking and, about, like, transcendental meditation and diarrhea and haikus. And he's just squirming. Oh. Like, you know, I was somewhere the other day in L.A. Who's, you, would, you would have fucking blown up if you saw this is i was walking through an event and somebody had a sign that said free haikus and i walked the other way oh. i was like fuck that shit i thought you're gonna see something about flat earth or something <laughs> no, no i was just like no thank you and just walked the other way there's a there's a pretty good line here though when she's at the end of her whole spiel she goes uh you know tmta all that doesn't mean doodle be squat when a girl doesn't have a date for new year she's in shit city it's like okay <laughs> And then he's like, by the way, we're going to be late. It's almost midnight. Uh, And they're like starting the countdown. So he's like, let's pull to this liquor store again. Now, if you listen to our Patreon episode, you'll know this is the second time we've we've gone into a liquor store for almost no reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, Lisa no, has there's to a use reason the for this time. No, but I mean like you're going to actually diarrhea problem. You're going to actually go into the liquor store and see a scene yeah. that has no purpose whatsoever and the most scared actor alive. I don't think that clerk knew he was going to be in a movie that night. <laughs> <laughs> I think he they looked- ran in with a camera and he's like, I don't Okay, so what? Let's set up. So what yeah, happens is he tells he tells her friend he's like, "Here's a hundred dollar bill. I want you to go buy the biggest goddamn bottle of champagne you can." And she's like, "Okay, yeah, you know." After she's done using the bathroom, and she uh, leaves, and the countdown's going on the radio, and he's like getting ready, and he puts on his recorder and everything, and he asks her, uh, "You want to smoke a number?" And that's the okay a big <laughs> fat bag of weed. There's no weed in that. Yeah, no, there, there is. Oh, there, there is, was there weed is, in is, it. Yeah, I thought it was just is. an empty. Bag. No, he had a big no. bag of weed. I was like, she's so dumb, she fell for it. Yeah, because you know, when they like, show yeah. her dead, they show like the weed is still across yeah. her face. <laughs> you know, you haven't you haven't done the old bagging gag. The old bag. bagging gag. <laughs> this is yeah. Where did he put this bag of weed then? This was in his pocket. Well, you know, cars were roomier back then. <laughs> they were. It well, came with every Cadillac. Yeah, the two seater Mercedes. The two seater Mercedes. <laughs> 
had to fit three people in a big bag of weed. <laughs> so, and so, yeah, she, he, he asks her to smell this because he's got the good stuff here. And when she reaches down, he pulls the bag over her head and suffocates her. By the way, he doesn't do it right because he leaves Hell a whole no. bunch of air and room. And You're supposed to pull it taut so she can't breathe. That's one to grow on, listeners. <laughs> Mike, Mike has plenty of experience suffocating people with plastic bags. I mean, bags. you've seen it in Be movies. Aware. But seriously, though, if you're going to kill somebody and kill them quick... You probably shouldn't leave a bunch of air in the bag. Right. It just makes no sense. And, and you yeah. know, in real life, suffocation is not quick. He's given her no. a chance. Yeah. <laughs> he, he likes he's it like, when they put up a little bit of a fight. He's like a real saw, you know? He's like a real jigsaw. <laughs> he wants he her just, to, he he wants to value life. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Saw if when they reveal the, the jigsaw killer, mm. he looks like this? He's got the mustache <laughs> and the big lapels. <laughs> Like I would have liked a rhinestone it. cowboy. Yeah, yeah, he just looks like Neil Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked it in this movie if he rode around on a tricycle. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I, I have to expect Derek to start doing that in the next couple of scenes. I could see that. So Lisa comes back out with her biggest. Wait, hold on. We got to talk of... about the liquor store. Scene. Oh, that's right. I don't mean to yes. plow through that. <laughs> so we've lit this whole liquor store. We've set up a whole camera shot and everything. I think we get like full coverage. Yeah, but we're set up like a like a security camera though too. Like it's way up there. But I think we cut to a close. We do because he's counting out the <laughs> money back to her. And I swear to God, she only spent six dollars on this bottle of champagne. <laughs> yeah, he's got like bill after bill. Yeah, it is nineteen eighty. He's you know, like ninety one. Fucking bottle 92. of Dom was like three yeah. three ninety five. That then. was the biggest goddamn bottle she could find in there. <laughs> So this guy is so scared. We're it's gonna a play the audio. Somber moment because he is just terrified to be on camera. He's like ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah, 99. I think he got ambushed. I think this weird white lady came in here with a cameraman. <laughs> and she's like, "You want to be in a movie?" He's like, "No." What? What is no, this? I don't. He saw the scene before where they killed that woman. <laughs> and he didn't realize what's going on. Yeah, he's and like, so "Do he's you want to sniff the weed too?" <laughs> yeah, and then I think they this even some has some early form of get out. <laughs> like he even. Yeah. He even has like an extra line or something. He's like, yeah. She's like, all right, happy new year. He's like, yes, enjoy your night, ma'am. Happy new year. Happy Christmas or something. And it just goes on for a minute. And you're like, what the fuck are we doing? Well, we need time. Suffocation doesn't happen fast. <laughs> and so she walks back out and the car is gone. The car is gone, but she sees the shoe on the ground. And she goes to investigate. She sees that. There's like blood on the ground. She turns. She looks and she sees her friend's dress hanging out of the corner of a dumpster. And so she goes over there to see that, you know, slowly, uh-huh. Scooby Doo style. <laughs> and then she lifts the lid of the dumpster. And Murray Langston. And fucking Murray <laughs> Langston pops out. And he pops Thank out God. with this big bottle and he goes, Gay Wino's Dream, am I right? He. <laughs> I told God. you she wasn't going to like that joke. <laughs> No, 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 I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, I couldn't it's, resist. I was going to make a Murray Langston joke. You beat me to it. So uh, so Murray Langston's down there. Sonny's down there. And Evil's in there. And he's hiding in there with a little, little Zippo lighter. Yeah, he's that was smiling a great up at shot, her like, a, like a happy leprechaun. With the mustache still on. Oh, yeah. He's still in the full <laughs> costume. Uh, and then that's it. We just cut. She screams. And we cut away. Oh, he pulls her in. Yeah he, yeah, he drags her into it. Now, here's the thing about that. What if she didn't notice the shoe on the way out? <laughs> so she would have been like... Oh, she the car drove away. Because then he would just open the lid and go, meow. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> meow. Meow. <laughs> because I imagine, imagine she doesn't notice the shoe. She sees the car left. She goes, fuck it. She walks down the street. He spends the rest of the night at a dumpster. <laughs> you know, he's like a jigsaw again. He gave her a chance, you know. She failed. It's the long game. Yeah. So <laughs> he's waiting for, he's like, it's got to be midnight somewhere. God damn it. Like he's waiting for hours on that. Uh, so then he. So okay. the cops show up. Yes, the cops show up a little bit later, and they find the bodies. The bodies have been weirdly propped up. Like, I'm not even sure how that worked. They're scarecrowed. Yeah, they're kind of scarecrowed in this back alley. And the cop first looks at that, and his immediate gut reaction is to go, gross. <laughs> it's very, like, it's not, oh, my God. Or it's just <laughs> gross. And then they open the dumpster, and, like, a cat flies out, or, like, a, yeah. a cat so puppet. Excited. Because yeah. what it looks like is, like, a sock puppet cat yeah. is pulled with a string out of this dumpster. Murray and Langston's if, doing some prop work. <laughs> yeah. It's either Toonces or Salem from Sabrina. <laughs> Definitely Toonces. And if you <laughs> hopped into a car and took off. Yeah. If you notice, the cops don't even react. They're just like, what? That old thing. Yeah. And then they look over, and, the, and uh, Lisa goes down a kid's slide. Well, okay, no, hold on, hold on. 
I they not. find the first girl. Well, for some reason, the cops are now exploring a neighborhood, and they like Apparently go into somebody's al- backyard. This back alley behind the liquor store is adjacent to a kid's playground. Yeah, yeah. So they go in That's and like all occupying the same space. He set up the one lady in the car like a like a lawn gnome. Yeah, like like a scarecrow. And she's with, with the, the bag, bag on her head, weed and- on her head, and something. I, I mean, it was weird. And then they immediately cut to a slide, and the lady comes and down. Just, she suddenly just goes, and I don't know how you set that up. Yeah, it's like the old, you I know. I think he's you, got help from Murray Langston. He's up there, like, <laughs> and a push. It's like every time you find, like, uh, somebody murdered in a closet, they always seem to, like, fall down. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, how does that how are they, work? Yeah. Or, like, every Friday the 13th movie, yeah. where, like, you're running through the woods, and then someone just goes, woof, and, like, falls upside <laughs> down, hanging from a tree. Jason's behind her. Who the hell set that up? <laughs> uh, it just so happens to be the right typing, I guess. So she comes down the slide. It would have been, it's a really long slide. Yeah. So again, it was all part of the plan. It's like, I hope they get here right on time. He was doing the meow, meow. <laughs> God, that would be so good. So Evil's cruising back down Van Nuys Boulevard. So gotta make, gotta make his time. Well, okay. The, I do like this. We go back to the cops backstage and they, they get a call and they go, two dead white Caucasian girls, just like the nurse. And it was a good line because they're like, there's yeah. white girls dying all over LA tonight. Now it's, it's important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then, <laughs> and the, the cops have explained to Blaze now the plot of the film. Yeah, they've explained to her the premise, how this works. Mm-hmm. Every time they go back to the cops, it's just to explain what like, happened. Yeah, yeah. They even say at one point that like you know if he keeps to his schedule, he should be planning his next kill. Like yeah, no shit. Yeah, because yeah. he, he said it. He said he was gonna do it. Okay. Also, there's a part where Again, they fine said, work, "Detective." No, we'll get to that when they say it. Okay, because there's a part that makes no sense. Okay. So evil's driving. He's disguised as a priest now. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> He's on the next hitman level, you know. Now we got to go to a church. <laughs> you got to go to a church and like sneak in and, you know, poison the guy with holy water or something. In the confession booth. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm scared for little boys. Oh, well, that, that's been a long time. Uh, so he's disguised as a priest. Some bikers like mess with him. Yeah, they're he like, stopped at a red light and a biker comes along, like gives him the finger, right? Yeah, he's in the like, window. fuck you, father, or yeah. something. And then they go off. And then. What what happens? Like he's changing the radio, and yeah. he like ran over one of them because there's there's another light ahead that the bikers have stopped at, and he's dicking around with his radio trying to tune in, and he accidentally hits one of the bikes. It is filmed so poorly, you don't even really know what's going on because you don't get to see the bikers stop at a light or anything. No, it's just no, still in the car. He just suddenly hits a biker, and yeah, why are we doing this? It Why did, are we following this, whole this part like makes no sense? This Mr. Bean shit with the killer <laughs> of this movie. Yeah, because all of a sudden he hits the biker over and he's like, "Ooh, it's a misunderstanding." And they come at his car like the fucking living dead. They're like, "Get in, yeah. let us in, let us in." And he drives off. He goes into a drive-in. He pulls into the dead end drive-in to try and cool his heels a little bit. The Sepulveda Van Nuys. Yeah. So now Grand Theft Auto style. He's waiting until the star rating comes down. <laughs> yeah. So now we're gonna spend five minutes of this movie in a drive-in. We're gonna watch the trailer for some other horror movie. And it's an all night horror thon. Okay. And always. Lord, always an all night horror thon. Because we, we don't even have those now. No. Like every weekend, you can just run in and see an all, all horror all night and th- until 3 a.m. Well, they do. Bobby just went to one recently. I went to two of them in the <laughs> yeah, span of right. a week in October. Yeah. yeah that, was thing, that was Halloween. But I mean, I'm talking oh, about like New year Year's. round, New Year's, year round, whatever. It was supposed to be the, the, the marquee said something like a New Year's horror thon or something. Uh, and so it's a drive-in spookathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, spookies. <laughs> so he's gonna get locked in, right? That's how it works. Yeah, they're definitely locking him. No, in. he paid he's the gonna, he's he paid the full his, rate. Oh, he did oh that's pay. right, he did. So the bikers also arrive at the all night spookathon. Um, and then we cut to what would be an excuse for nudity, but there's no nudity, so it's just very out of place. Is a man grabbing a girl? It's a teenager trying to get it. Yeah, it's like a, a guy. So like two people in their thirties dressed like fifteen year olds, <laughs> like fifteen year olds from a previous era. We got like the varsity jackets. Yeah, and, I mean uh, it's like a porno. It's like or something. <laughs> Cheryl Blossom from Riverdale is hanging out. Yeah, in here. it was made to be worn long. <laughs> right, and like, and he she, says to her, she's he, he's feeling her up while she gets high, and he just turns and goes, "About that time, isn't it?" And she says, "Maybe next movie." <laughs> <laughs> and so then we cut to the priest. So as I see it, is like, is he trying to hide, or did he just is he like narcoleptic? No, I think that this, his plan was to switch cars. Oh, I thought it was, it was just to hide because he just pulls into well, that's a what spot. I mean. Like he's gonna pull in yeah. here, and he's gonna jump into a different vehicle and take off because these bikers are gonna be looking for his car now. 
but so Which he fucks his plan. He's got to stay on schedule. So he's got to do something quick so he can get out of there. So he pulls inside and then like tries to fall asleep or something in the front seat. Really odd. And like, I think he's just playing, playing casual. It's just weird. And then the bikers come in. They rough up some random guy? Like, it's not even him. They they're, just start picking on somebody else hey, in a car. they're a rough crew. They're bikers in a movie. That's also, how it works. It's like, dude, they found a new mark. Leave. Like, you're clear. Now's the chance. You know? Yeah, they're, they got a new target. So they're messing with another guy. Then the evil gets out of the car, runs around the drive-in, and then a biker stops him. Uh-huh. And the beggar wants to rough him up a bit. And he says, I'm a man of God, not a man of violence, and then becomes a man of violence. Stabs him in the stomach. Just guts him. And then evil steals the car. Yeah, he runs to the teenagers and he goes, where's the fucking keys? You know, and, he, and he throws the kid out. Yeah, he throws the guy out, <laughs> right? Yeah. And he jumps in the car. The girl could leave, but she's slowly buttoning up her shirt. And she's like, I can't get out with this exposed. I gotta stay in here. <laughs> and so she's staying in the back seat instead so of leaving now, the fucking... Now we're driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> That would have been good. He's like, where do you want to go, huh? He puts the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, now he's driving down the street with this girl in the car. And she's, you know, trying to bargain with him. You know, because he's playing oh, with a God. switchblade. And she's like, listen, mister, if it's if it's money you want, I don't have any. And I'm like, is she about to do the monologue from Taken? <laughs> <laughs> but what I do have is a very specific set of skills. Then she starts whipping his ass. <laughs> She even starts going, she's like, you can make it with me if you want. I, I won't, won't say anything. Yeah, I won't yeah. fight or something like it's that. It's like, Jesus. God. Cut but, back to the TV show. Countdown. Hey, guys, it's Aspen's time. All right? And, like, that's when you see the, the ski vigil. The candlelight vigil. Like, and they're all in a single file line going down. It's very <laughs> odd. And they're just, like, shaky footage of, like, people in Aspen. Like, I guess they don't realize that Aspen also has buildings. Because they're just on the ski slope. They're like, hey, I think that's all we do up here, right? Ski? Yep. <laughs> At all hours of the night. <laughs> Everybody in Aspen's on the ski slope tonight. And so then he goes, all right, well, it's time to kill. But first, as I saw it, now, did you guys see this this way? Is two drunks wander onto a green screen? <laughs> it felt that way. <laughs> just no. to me. I didn't, it didn't look like a green screen, the but it was like not. The first shot of it was a green screen. Yeah. It looked very odd. It Something looked like was a off. back ski movie. Like, it didn't, it didn't fit. Uh, <laughs> Brother Bear and Brother <laughs> Rabbit. It was like two drunks wandered onto this green screen, and then a car appears, and it's Evil's car. And it cuts inside the car, and he's like, what the fuck's happening? And then he gets out, and he roughs up these drunks who have apparently walked in front of the car, and the girl runs out of the car into, yeah. like... smartly. Where all of a sudden we're in... The in, forest. In, like, some sort of, yeah, forest. Because what slasher flick is complete without a chase through the woods? Mm-hmm. And then we find out it's, like, a softball field, and she's, like, hiding under bleachers, and then the cops show up. And that's the crazy fucking part, because it works. She Just, runs from the killer, she hides under some easy-to-see-her hiding place, and she survives. <laughs> I mean, this whole part, the whole, like, biker driving, this girl. Oh, that's filler. You could just get get rid of it. You don't need any of this. Like, this, none of this makes sense because the cops show up. By the way, did you notice the cops don't even show? They were so cheap when they filmed this movie. They didn't even have the cops show up on the softball field. You just hear off screen, hey, we're the police. Yeah, <laughs> hey. no cop cars in this whole thing, is there? They're, no, the cops are like where the drunks are. Yeah, right. But they didn't film. They, they were like, we're, of we're not paying earlier, them all but... night, all right? Yeah. And they just did voiceover. And he goes, hey, we're the police. And then he runs off. And then they go, <laughs> lady, are you okay? <laughs> and she doesn't even react. Like, they just put that voiceover. They, like, ADR'd this into the movie. And then it just cuts. We'll never see that girl again. None no. of this will ever be addressed. But apparently, he didn't get that Aspen kill. Nope. So he, all for late. not, but you know what? He did do two for one the last time. Yeah. So maybe he's like, well, you know, yeah, he's going to count good enough. Yeah. Yeah. The plan is going off the rails on him. So then we go to a, the TV show and <laughs> this is great. The cop, the detective walks up on the stage during a commercial break. He goes, hello. Yes, everybody. I'm the police. And they're all like, Boo. Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, and he's like, hey, we're locking the doors. So if you leave, you can't get back in and, and nobody's goes, allowed in. And girl goes, you leave. <laughs> <laughs> like they're, they're about to riot. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't it be great if he was like uh, doing his little type five? He's like, oh, doing God. his stand up. <laughs> These are the hecklers for him, you know? Uh, so basically, he's like, all right, the room's sealed off. If you leave, we won't let, let you back in. We're also not letting anybody into the hotel, even people who stay here. Yep. And they're like, okay, whatever. We don't care. Bring back Made in Japan. <laughs> uh, so then we go to backstage, and this is my favorite part of the whole movie. This is, is this where the sun is now being 
shown in his stocking and sunglasses. Derek has added Jordy LaForge visor to his yeah, stocking. Yeah. But not only that, like Rod Serling shows up. <laughs> totally. Okay, this part <laughs> of the sure, movie. If you will. <laughs> and he does. He does. This is so weird. Is they go, okay, uh, the re- she's like, what do you mean we're closing down the show? And they go, well, it's this psychologist guy. Oh, God. I forgot about him. And she's like, what? And the cop goes something like, We've noticed that he's mutilating all his victims' breasts. And no, he hasn't. Yeah, I was like, the shit he is. I have not seen that. One, this guy has not been at the crime scene, too. Where is he getting this stuff from? <laughs> he says he's been mutilating the breasts because he's got a mommy issue or something and like that. And even the that. characters in the movie are like, fuck are you talking right. about? And then this psychologist guy delivers the intro to a Twilight Zone episode. He's building to his grand climax with his ultimate victim. Yeah, he like, says it, it easy, Rod. Yeah, and it's like, okay, Rod Serling. And he's even got the haircut oh, the, and the suit yeah. and everything. Is if that this, supposed to be like I'm, making fun of it? I don't know. Like, If the screen glitched to black and white, I would laugh my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> like, This is just all the, the uh, intro for the Twilight Zone ride. Yeah, this is Tower of Terror <laughs> part two. You have to watch two. the first 60 minutes of New Year's <laughs> Evil. <laughs> and then you get to go on Tower of Terror. Yeah. The ball has dropped in the Eastern time zone <laughs> and in the Mountain time zone. But the next ball to drop will be in the twilight zone (laughs) (laughs) this was my favorite part the whole movie though the rod serling oh god i was like what is this uh and so then we go to outside the holiday inn they won't let some punker get in even though he drove all the way from huntington huntington beach man you realize how far that is He's like, it's like 45 minutes. Tops. Yeah, fucking sucks. <laughs> I know that drive. Uh, and then Evil shows up outside. He's still dressed as the priest at this point, And he's like, shit, they won't let me in the hotel. So he goes around to the loading dock. Now we're doing dock. some real Agent 47 <laughs> shit. <laughs> he goes around the loading dock and he like hits a cop with a brick. Oh, okay, so he hides behind a wall and he says like, hey, cop, come over here and help me with this drunk. Yep. Is, that, is that what he said? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Be, why would the cop care? Yeah. Mm. It's just weird. It's like, you're not going to get him over there. But anyways, uh, the cop goes over, he hits him with a brick, and then he changes into his cop disguise, right? Uh, and then he goes, walks just right into the hotel, still carrying the giant radio. So none of the other cops are suspicious. Like, who's this new yeah, guy? Yeah, that's an issue with me, too. I had that in my notes. That like The cops in the LAPD don't seem to realize that there's a new officer they don't recognize, and he's carrying a radio. I would have loved it if he pulled the same thing as the sanitarium. He's like, hey, got transferred on New Year's Eve. Am I right? I'm <laughs> new old days. <laughs> I'm new here. Hey, you want to go fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he did buy that bottle of champagne. That's right. right. You know, I, I would have liked it if he did voices. Like, he needed, like, accents. He's like, hey, just transfer me over from Jersey, right? Like, instead of just wearing a priest uniform, he's Father Guido Sarducci. <laughs> <laughs> It's a piece of cake. Hey, hey, I'm happy to know you. Like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> it's a New Year's in the old country. <laughs> that would have made it better. He yeah. needed, he needed voices. So, hey, you guys want to buy some peeps? <laughs> Uh, then he goes inside the hotel and then just changes his, his disguise again. Yep. And then we cut to Diane and the cop and they're like searching her room. So they're yeah, they're just clearing the room of any bad people. Why do they need to bring her? She was too Again, upset I mean, or going upstairs. If there's upstairs. a killer on the loose, let, keep her safe. Yeah, keep like, her in one room with guards. Don't bring her in the room. So they clear the room. And by the way, gun out, almost kills the bitch son because he's laying on a bed. And he kicks down the door of the bedroom. So I guess it's a good thing she's there because he points the gun right at him. And totally. he's about to pull he the trigger. He shoot anything that moves. And she's like, no, 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 that's my son. And he's like, no, you finally care, huh, mom? Yeah, and he's doing a really good Matthew Broderick in this scene. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like He talks like Matthew Broderick in this movie. <laughs> Uh, and I just write, God, I wish he would have just killed himself with those pills. Like, I wish that was the end of this character. Oh, yeah, because we forgot to mention, he at one point he was downstairs sneaking around with his stocking on his head. And, that leads to nothing. And sunglasses. He kept, he reminded me of uh, the Goofy movie that... <laughs> Powerline. Powerline. Yeah. <laughs> he was, he was, he was going to go on next. He was going to come down and do standing out. That's exactly what it looked like to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> so then, okay... That it's like, all right, well, leave me alone in this room because I need to change or something. I know there's a killer on the loose who wants to murder me, but leave me alone in this room for a little while. Then some guy in a tracksuit with a weird it's mask It's a Stan Laurel up. mask. Okay, so a guy in a tracksuit, like an Adidas suit. Oh, I thought it, it looked like Bruce, Bruce Jenner. That's what Bruce Jenner used to wear <laughs> did, all the time. He did kind of look like Bruce Jenner. Oh, yeah. One, yeah once Evil is in the, the tracksuit, he looks exactly like Bruce Jenner. Yeah. 
So Bruce Jenner in, in a Stan a, Laurel mask. In a Stan Laurel mask comes out. Uh, holding like they thought a knife. they were going to pull another Halloween and get like an iconic look out of this. They're like, oh, give him a jumpsuit and a mask of some famous person. Okay, he has a switchblade out, right? Yes, yeah. For a second. Okay, does she see the switchblade or no? No, he okay. just puts it away. Like he he sneaks up behind her and he goes like, "It'd be so easy to kill her right now." And then he puts yeah. it away. and Goes like, "He can't kill her. It's not midnight. It's yes. only to, it's only to right. signal a, to yeah. us, the viewer, that he's evil." Yeah, but again, that's literally the only reason they would have his switchblade. We switch know you're out. not gonna kill her. Come on. But yeah, she turns around. He pulls off the mask. Best part of the movie. He's okay. in the, her room. Yeah. He pulls whips it, off. it off and she goes, yeah. "Richard." Yeah, that's the big twist. The f- she's the he's the husband. He's yeah. been her husband the whole, the whole time. That's when I was like, I love this movie because I never saw that's that when it shit wins coming. Over. It got. Me. Did you see this coming? Yeah, kind of. I wrote that it was either going to be the son or the dad at the very beginning. Hmm. Huh? Because well, yeah, they were they were selling yeah, it because, as the, because as in the hindsight son. they do make a big deal out of like dad's not around, dad's off somewhere. Because <laughs> they were selling it as the son until the phone call, then they switched over to the son sitting. And I'm like, okay, that's obviously not him, but it's somebody that. Because we know it's who the, the killer is. Yeah. I would have never have thought it was the husband. I thought no. it was a great reveal. No. Because the son also says just before this scene is like, uh, he was the present. I had a present for you. This is the big surprise. Because mm-hmm. he was going to have the dad come and surprise her. So the dad is there. He's evil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And his real name is Richard, but we'll just call him evil in the notes for now on. Sure. Um, because he is. And he's like, she's all happy to see him and everything. And he's like, hey, why don't I go tell that cop I'm your husband right before he shoots me too, huh? And she's like, okay. And then he goes out and he tells the cop, he's like, hey, uh, I'm her husband. I'm in the room. And he's like, where, how did, wait, how did you get in here? Where were you? And he's like, I was in the John, didn't want to get shot. You know, I know how you <laughs> LAPD are. You know? uh, and he's like, uh huh. And it turns out the surprise that Derek was talking about was dad was going to show up. Yeah. And we were all going to be here for your big show. So, and you didn't care. Although she does care. She's very excited to see her husband. Yeah. Uh, so it's they're her all. son that's a little son of a bitch. They're all happy, and the cop outside is very mm. suspicious. And when he he gets on the radio, and he's like, radios to the other cops, he's like, all right, we need to have a conversation because this guy just showed up, and he shouldn't have been let in. Also, though, you think, though, they probably would have let her husband in? Yeah. Like, well, I, I don't see why they wouldn't have. The if a man yeah. showed up and said, I'm yeah. her husband, and they went, you yeah. know this guy? Yeah. Yeah. What's the, I don't go, yeah, see why this, yeah. Yes. What's Done. the trepidation there? He could have gotten in the front door, been like, yeah, it's my wife on right. Or at least like notified and then like the, uh, call, the, her, call her manager. The manager would have brought yeah. it in. But Better so, idea, sneak around in a costume. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wants to play Hitman, okay? He's playing his game. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we had to invent video Man, games. I would have bought the last Hitman this. game if it was a New Year's Evil game. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, by the way, amazing. last Hitman game was great. Is it the episodic one? Yeah, right? it was great. I, I really? almost want to get that game now and just pretend I'm playing New Year's Evil. <laughs> PlayStation Store. It, you do get to kill somebody at a party. Perfect. And you can just let the whole lightning system fall down on a, hundreds of people. <laughs> Jesus. It's a good one. Uh, so we go downstairs. Uh, Evil now is hacking into like a security feed, yeah. and like, I'm like, dude, this guy's got plans, man. Like he's going he's working full on. This for a while. Not a lot to do in Palm Springs. <sighs> then we go to the cops behind the stage, and they say we recovered a Mercedes, so we know it's your husband. Like we know it's the yeah. husband. There's one phone call that like lays it all out. Yeah, like your like, husband's been killing people. They found a Mercedes abandoned at the drive-in. They know it's connected to these murders and everything. And they're like, so that lady's husband is the killer. So the cops are aware. Um, and they then they say he also used to be a mental patient at, I thought he said at that sanitarium, but apparently not. At a sanitarium in Palm Springs. Yeah, I thought it was a sanitarium in Palm Springs. So apparently he was That's a, just the payoff for earlier when, saying that okay. dad's been in Palm Springs. Yeah. When was he a mental patient? While he was married? Like right away, during this, he's sick. So why would she be happy to see him? Shouldn't she be like, oh, shouldn't she be Because he got a- released. I just thought this was a confusing maybe she, element. I mean, maybe he claimed to be on a business trip, but he was trying to get help. It was like, no like regular man could be a killer. He got to be crazy. You know, he's like, <laughs> got to have some sort of mommy thing where he cuts off breasts. Yeah. And it's like, okay. That makes sense. It's either a Freudian thing or a Jungian thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe that is tied, like like the breast mutilation thing that isn't actually happening. Yeah. Like, he's just making it's shit up. It's never happened. He's just like, he was at a sanitarium. Like, that did not happen. No. So... Well, because that's when I write, so why did he use the mustache disguise at a bar, but no disguise at the sanitarium where they might know who he was? Or his car. <laughs> yeah, it was very weird how we just randomly put on that mustache. It was like this plan was made by a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> so then the cops up, from upstairs comes down and he's like, 
hey, we think it's uh, your the lady's husband. And the manager goes, I fucking knew it the whole time. That fucking creep never really? liked them. Yeah. I called yeah. it. Called it from the start. So then we go to Diane in the elevator. And like, so <laughs> God, this small talk yeah. sequence is great. So we're just killing time on this elevator, hanging out. Her yeah, runtime, runtime. And she goes, uh, you married? He goes, yeah, 10 years. Kids? Yeah, two sets of twins. She goes, what's the matter? No TV? And he goes, really? <laughs> And then evil starts dropping the elevator all fast because he's like he's like hot wired the elevator with a screwdriver. Yeah, this is like uh, Dennis Hopper and Speed. Oh yeah, you know how he just like somehow hacks the whole subway with a screwdriver. And the camera or some shit? is there right where yeah. he needs it to watch it. Yeah, and, and now so it's a elevator. <laughs> he's going to he's like making it go down all fast. Yeah, and then apparently this passed them both out. <laughs> well, that's why Rod Serling showed up. We're in the Tower of Terror. Now. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, what happened to that psychologist? He's just gone. Oh, he's You'll gone. never he, see he him again. No, no, he was no. never really here. He talked to us, and then he walked <laughs> off the set. <laughs> and so the cop and Diane are apparently passed out in the elevator because Evil walks in and then knocks out Gives the him a cop, kick real quick. But yeah. Diane doesn't yeah. notice? And then he drags the well, cop out. She's pretty out. disoriented from, the, from hopping around inside that elevator. Yeah, he drags the cop out, and then he wakes her up, and she's like, oh, I'm in shock, or something. And he's like, yeah, uh, so how you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> that's a pretty great scene, actually, the way that's laid out. Uh, and then he goes, hey, guess what? I got a surprise for you. And he brings out the radio, and he plays her his latest kill. Yep, that was me. And she, yeah, he goes, that's right. I'm evil. And she goes, why? And he goes, because I'm fed up. You're just like every other lady in my life. Ladies are not very nice people. And then he, he says, yeah, yeah literally. And, and he goes on this rant, His MRA monologue about how it's the worst thing in the world to be the husband of a rich woman and a celebrity because he has to beg her assistant that he killed in the beginning of the movie. He killed that lady because he apparently has to ask her for allowance money. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne, like, he's sort of the Kevin yeah. Federline situation. <laughs> And he's like, I'm the real star, Brittany. I'm the star. <laughs> Popo's owl is going to be huge. <laughs> so his complaint is, you're a rich lady. You are you don't give me any money. Yeah, he feels emasculated. It's he a, even says at one point, you castrated me. <laughs> it's like, you know, there are, you can't just get a divorce. Says, yeah, or a job. <laughs> or and a he's like, a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> you want to feel like a man? Go do something. <laughs> like, you're a metal patient who's married to a famous lady, and yeah. she's giving you money. You're doing all right. Yeah, you're doing fine, man. Also, by the way, if he wasn't killing anybody tonight, he had a pretty good New Year's. He picked up multiple women, first try. He was going to have a great day. They were all about it. So it's not like his life's like but bad. It's, it's I half, mean, things are it, going It's up. partially him about himself, but he also talks a lot about the son, you know, mm. and that like how she's shitty to him. That's part of his castrated me thing. He's like, and, and that's not nice. And now you're trying to do the same to our son because ultimately this is a heartwarming tale about a father and what he would do to protect his kid. Yeah, which is apparently you didn't even notice that he got a, a role yeah. on a TV show and he didn't even use your last name. He got it on his own. And she's just like, oh, that's wonderful. I was kind of getting ready for the show. And he's just like, you're a terrible mother. You're a terrible wife. He also says something about how she's apparently like a whore or something. <laughs> right, and I like heard that she's part. There's an that she's been cheating on him it's as like, well. We have not seen any indication of this. Maybe put that in the movie. He may have gotten that from the Rod Serling guy. He's like, <laughs> also, she sleeps around. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> she he's sucks like, a mean dick. <laughs> he's like, I can attest. <laughs> <laughs> Consider if you will. <laughs> this black this light. <laughs> so... Then <laughs> he explains his plans for New Year's Day. Oh, God, I fun. love it. It's a great line. He's like, hey, I'm going to go to the Rose Bowl game with my boy and let you sleep in. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And oh, then, it's so good. Okay, then we cut to the cops walking around a hotel checking rooms. Then we cut back to now he's like chained her to an elevator, which, by the way, he's done this chain around her neck. I thought she was going to be hung from that elevator. Well, she like probably should plan. have been. Was yeah. like to slow. He's doing some snidely whiplash shit, man. He might as well have tra tried her to some yeah. train tracks. This is a chain around a woman's neck that he makes the elevator go up, and she's hung from, but apparently not, I guess, still can breathe and is not choked at all. Yeah, and a nice touch of weird comedy that they leave two people in this elevator who just get to kind of, like, react. Yeah, do a little type five hey, in the, the elevator. what's going on with it? This elevator's crazy. I like that there's a cameraman standing on his tippy toes with the camera in the elevator. <laughs> yeah. Make it look like security. <laughs> and then, like, it shaking it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that behind-the-scenes footage. That's oh, why God, we need a good yeah. Blu-ray of this movie. Also, did you notice the severed head at the top of the elevator? Yeah, that was Yvonne. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it was, like... Jesus, this guy's doing work. Yeah. Like, let's see the process of getting that there. No half-stepping on New Year's, man. 
So then, random, yeah, random people, the, the camera starts shaking because apparently that elevator also has a shake function yep. on the control <laughs> panel. And then he's going to like slam her into the ground, apparently. Because he tells her to get smashed. He does. He says, yeah, get smashed. He puts the screwdriver Shit, in. Yeah. Apparently, all you need to do to make an elevator go crazy is to shove a screwdriver either up or down. So join us go. on our next mini bin. We're going to we're gonna try this. Yeah. And so we're going to put Hughes on an elevator, and then we're going to dick around with a screwdriver. At the Holiday Inn. What's going on in there, Hughes? <laughs> this, again, great advertisement for Holiday Inn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> this is how yeah. all the elevators are. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm telling you, somebody has a serious vendetta. They're like... <laughs> Did the Double Tree make this movie or something? Like, <laughs> Mr. Radisson fun? Follow the money, Mike. <laughs> so, the cops show up and, like, shoot the control panel while yeah. they're in a gunfight with him, and it somehow stops the elevator. It's classic. Everything's fine. They run up to the roof. And he puts his mask back on. And I go, it always ends on a roof. Of course. Every one of these movies ends on a roof. Oh, okay, hold up. I forgot to mention this. When... This is a long time ago, but we have to bring this up. When he killed that girl and the dumpster scene, they had the fucking Friday the 13th sound effect. They oh, did. Yeah. Did you hear that? I did not. No. Faintly. I will play it in this episode. Yeah, please do. Please there do. There is a part where I they play it. There's definitely clearly that, you know, Mancini, like the high strings that they do. That it, blah, 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 happens periodically, but. It was the fucking Jason. I didn't hear the kid. He mama ma. I'll play it. If it's not, I'll cut this part out of the episode. But I swear no, no, leave it in. I played it. Swimming it, Mike. <laughs> so it ends on a roof, as always. Evil puts on that mask again and starts laughing. And then takes it back off again. Yeah, and the cops show up. And then the main cop shows up. And then he just... He has his Roy Batty scene. Only he chooses to uh, to quote Hamlet. <laughs> Yeah, he says some... So he's quoting Hamlet? Yeah. He gives a Hamlet speech. He gives his best Shakespeare. He says, uh, to die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is there too. And the cop responds to this... Cover my performance up with his. (laughs) And the cop responds to this by going, don't do it, sicko. And then he just jumps off the roof. Yeah. Yep, and we get a sweet dummy drop. Yeah, and because we, like, like the dummy back. catches the wind for yeah. a second. It's just sort of floating <laughs> yeah. out. Again, just another night at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> 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 Holiday Inn Burbank. Dead women, leaky faucets, and guys jumping off roofs. Yep. You know, and, and fun so, elevators. <laughs> yeah, faulty elevators. Man, I want to go to this Holiday Inn now. Uh, it would have been. It would have been next great. Next time we go they, see Mike, we're swinging by that Holiday. Yeah, yeah. it would have been great if the cop at one point tried to get ice. He's like, even the ice machine. Sucks. <laughs> Come on. No room service after ten. Man, what the fuck, fuck? This place. The soda machine only has RC cola. <laughs> it cuts to the front, and like a cop is just ringing the bell for service. <laughs> just he's like, I've been here twenty minutes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and so then this all ends with basically, uh, you see his dead body. And the Derek is son. staring down at his dad. Yeah, the bitch son comes and gives him a hug, cuddles him. Yeah, and he's like, oh puppy. And then we just... He disappears. Well, he grabs the mask. Oh, yeah. And walks off with it. And he just has this look. And then... And then uh, Blaze is getting loaded into an ambulance. Getting her injuries tended to. And we pan to the front of the ambulance. And we see that the ambulance driver is is, uh, Derek wearing the Stan Laurel mask. And we pan over to the passenger seat. And the ambulance driver is dead. So the third movie we've had in the past two months that ends like this. With a... Oh, three months. With a driver gag? Yeah. Yeah. The Chilling, yep. mm-hmm. Spookies, uh-huh. and New Year's Evil. Absolutely. They all end with the same shot And how the hell the did he manage to pull this off? There's people everywhere. <laughs> yeah, because like around guy, the- A guy puts on a fucking laurel mask and then kills a guy in the front of a van in front of everyone. Because there is, there's a whole crowd of people around the ambulance. There's like- Dozens of people because is it just that they're all looking at the body? No, they're all looking at the well, body. They're all he, looking at the body. Yeah. Her getting rolled out because they're like, oh, the celebrity. This is like when Whitney Houston died, and there's all these people standing outside the hotel and everything. Nobody yeah. looks at the guy in the uniform. It's true. Only what's on the tray. Yeah, just the mask, you know. And so, <laughs> so he's going to be driving the ambulance. You know, this is like a Stone Cold Steve Austin bit from uh, the late '90s. It's just like, oh my God, Steve Austin's <laughs> driving the van. So, recommendations? Uh, it's not going to make anything on my list. <laughs> so no not no. even just if you're curious no not even if you're curious i don't think there's anything exceptionally great about this movie you hated it it was not enjoyable but not it didn't it wasn't hard to watch it was long it felt long 
This is also one of the shortest movies we've covered. I know. It really <laughs> felt long. Nice tight 90. So this or Dogs? Oh, I'd watch Dogs again. Oh. Dogs is like that movie Evolution to me. It's just they're so bad, but you can watch it multiple times. Evolution? Remember Who that? Who has ever rewatched that? Oh, no I one. have. Oh, wow. Jesus. Dude, I swear. Over the course of this podcast, the, mo- <laughs> the movies that we discover are favorites of yours. You know what? Not I, favorites, but I mean, I can, it's a bad movie I can rewatch. I think I we need a mini bit of going through Hughes's DVD collection. Like I have a DVD collection. Like we're I just gonna get. We're gonna do a mini bit of that. Hughes's top ten. Is it just or, like a thumb drive with the? We're gonna do the Hughes five, five movies. Mini bit. <laughs> How about we just go through your Netflix queue, like what you've watched in oh, the past like month, and, and pull we'll, your phone out and look at what you've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's we'll also let's go check out your, your search uh, history on your yeah. laptop. We'll also go through your Pornhub history and everything. <laughs> and photos. Santa porn? Oh, no. You're into Santa porn? No, you. Who isn't? <laughs> it was a joke from our last episode. It oh, didn't hit. damn it. <laughs> tisk, tisk. It's uh, all right. None of our listeners have heard that episode. So, Bobby, uh, Chris, and I, we all definitely I loved it. Yeah, it was great. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah um, it, the premise is, it, the premise works. Yeah. Great feel twist. That's a great, especially for like, you know, during the slasher boom in the 80s, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. You got the holiday, you got a way to use that holiday. The twist is good. There's so much filler in the middle. I'm not, I'll agree with you on that one. Like, we don't yeah. need any of that shit. I was never bored though. I, was I wasn't always either, interested. but I, I acknowledge that we don't need that shit. Like, you could have used that toward other things to make the twist even pay off harder. Yeah. But this is, uh, this is going to, I think this is the first movie with a band in it that you guys recommend. Oh, you're right. Mm. Usually the kiss of death is if there's a live performance. Yeah, in Voyage a, of the Rock movie. Aliens. Well, Bobby liked Rock Aliens. Okay. That's a full recommend. Okay. Did you like that movie? I think mm. you did. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. Hey, you, you thought it was all right. Yeah. So you hear that sound, though? Yeah. <laughs> I'm prepared this time. I got <laughs> oh, this. Oh, okay. Hughes, how do you think Bobby and DeVito fit into this movie? I think there's only one part of this movie that they can fit into in my mind. When the 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 teen lover is is carjacked and uh, she's taken and she gets stopped by the drunks and she runs out into the woods and finds herself under the bleachers, we never saw cops, <laughs> <laughs> but we heard it's the police. <laughs> Come with us, you're fine. <laughs> It was them. I'd like that. It was them. I love it. That's a great one. So that's what ends up happening to that girl? (laughs) Well, she isn't going to complain, remember? I feel like, yeah. I feel, yeah. You can do it. I won't complain. They heard that and they were like, oh. And they were on the scene. (laughs) Whenever a girl says, you can do it and I won't complain, they're there. It's like a little, whenever a bell rings, an angel gets his wig. (laughs) Thanks, Clarence. (laughs) I think that at the end of the movie, uh, they go like, oh, no, that wasn't the only mask. And he pulls off Evil's mask again and you reveal the was Bobby all The poof. <laughs> and then the, the side panels of the ambulance fall off and it's the straight arrow. <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah. Sammy was Johns playing the plays pitch, as they go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've been in cahoots the whole time. You just hear Sammy Johns in the distance. <laughs> the ambulance pulls off and you just hear medic. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the idea of the panels just falling <laughs> off one by one. It and, wasn't an ambulance at all. And Diane's stuck in the back and then just... <laughs> the, the guy in the uh, thing turns around. I guess it would have to be Bobby as the bitch son and DeVito as the dad. Turns around and goes, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> and then the toast just pops up. <laughs> what do you guys think? Just, well, <coughs> okay. okay. Uh, well, you know, earlier... Uh, I think there's a reason that the other uh, phone operator on the show was doing that angry dead stare the whole time. And I think she'd been taking calls the entire day, too. <laughs> from a different caller, from a different phone booth going, uh, you can call me the stud. <laughs> She's like, yeah, what's your favorite song? <laughs> Sammy Johns. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to request that song. She's like, that didn't come out this year, sir. But something good. <laughs> What, what, what do you got on? Are you doing anything for New Year's? <laughs> DeVito, DeVito, how long do I have to have this thing in my mouth? <laughs> DeVito just whispering behind him. <laughs> just tell, yeah. Bobby, tell her this. Say this to her. Say this to her. Keep the modulator in your mouth. Bobby, every hour someone's getting chloroformed until New Year's. <laughs> Bobby, keep... <laughs> Every hour, on the hour. <laughs> and so she's just stopped answering the phone now, and she's just <laughs> staring at Blaze the whole time. Chris, what do you think? I think... Uh, at the, the manager got murdered in the beginning. They had the room right next door. They were staying over in L.A. They are getting ready for... Uh, they were going to meet up with Chooch later. But they hear this commotion. And so they kind of... Bobby kind of uses a credit card and goes, Hey, oh, 
<laughs> oh, I see. Hey, wait till the video gets a load of this. <laughs> and so Bobby takes her body, places it on top of his own on the bed, and turns out the lights and yells for DeVito to come in. And he comes in, but Bobby's hiding his face with her hair. And so Bobby, DeVito's like, oh, wait till, oh, we gotta get, get this before Bobby does. And so DeVito uh, proceeds to have, have his way with this corpse. And right <laughs> as DeVito finishes, Bobby goes, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Like at the beginning of the movie when they killed that girl. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden DeVito walks in the bathroom and goes, I didn't say kill her, Bobby. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I said fuck her. <laughs> well, thanks again for joining us oh. on the Grind Bin. Thank you to all our patrons. Happy New Year. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back uh, with Patreon picks next month. Uh, it's going to be a great month. Oh, we got a great. lot of good movies to cover. We're looking forward to riding shotgun in the van for a month. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Hughes is very uh, excited about it. He's, oh, yeah. He's been in a real funk maybe for like two months on this podcast. He hasn't got a movie we've been like. We've been really beating him down with these movies. Poor guy. You guys have enjoyed like most of them. Oh, yeah, totally. Hughes, what movie do you want? Like, What do you want to go back to to make you in a good mood? Not a specific title, but like, what kind no, of like thing the, are you hoping for? Like the old 1970s just... You want to get back to sex comedies? Yeah, the sex comedies. We I haven't think. done a 70s movie, it seems like, in forever. Forever, right? Go away from it. We're going to get back. Though. Yeah, don't we, worry. Get back to I the roots. Because like, my last pick right. was 1959, I think. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, no, well, your last you know, pick was Dogs. Oh, Dogs. That was yeah. 1982. That was, was it 70s? Yeah, I think it was like yeah, 70s. It was 70s. 74. Yeah. That but you know 70s. what, though? I've had a look at some of the patron picks, and I think you're going to be pretty pleased. I think I think our listeners are going to take care of you, Hughes. There's a Crown International movie in there. Yeah. Uh, it's a 70s sex comedy. Oh, good. There's a movie by the guy who made The Teacher and Scorchy in there, mm. which is... Oh, God, yes. Oh, my yeah. God. We, get, we yeah. got that good good for January. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fun. Oh, boy. Bobby, drop the ball. Oh, yeah. Start the van. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. <laughs>
step on the gas before we get green. And 